Hi, good evening, and welcome to the... <laughs> move my mic here. Good evening, and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health um, meeting of June 10th, 2020. We're uh, 605, 604, we're opening up uh, town meeting. So this meeting is located at the main meeting room in municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Um, the remote meeting connection is broadcast on um, FCAT, Frank, uh, Frontier Community Access Television. There's a dial-in number of 206-331. 4836 and you enter your attendee, attendee pin of 694-111-409 pound. Um, you can't call in, uh, participants should call in and enter their pin when prompted. The public is encouraged to log in using their computers or smartphone for a full function participation. Please use this R, uh, URL to log in to the webinar. It's, um, w, uh, it's HTTPS uh, colon, let's see, back forward slash forward slash webinar dot any meeting dot com forward slash six nine four one 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 four oh nine. Uh, meeting attendees should mute phones unless asking a question or commenting. All attendees should uh, wait to speak until other participants are finished and then just, you know, state your name clearly um, and your question clearly. So thank you all for joining tonight. It's our first night after a new fresh election, and uh, I want to thank um, Barbara Hancock and all, the, all of her staff that put yeah. together a really successful, uh, we came off a very successful town meeting, we'll touch on that, but um, yeah. you guys have worked really hard on, on keeping people safe, and we had over, yeah. you know, 500 and something mail-ins. Mail-ins, yep. Thank you, everybody, for doing that. Yep. We only had maybe a couple hundred people come in, yes. uh, a little over 200 and something come in. Yes. Um, and uh, it was very, I, I heard tons of people saying how clean and easy and comfortable it was it for was people to very, come in. Yeah, it was yeah. a very simplistic setup. Yes. Um, so, yeah. yeah. It was a good exercise, actually, um, thinking forward to September and November yes. to kind of, you know, work through it. Uh, it might have been a little overkill, perhaps. I, I wasn't Perfect. sure if it might be. Right. But um, well, it, it was good to well. kind of work it out and see how it would work um, yeah. on a larger scale. I don't know yeah. the answer to that, but <laughs> right. we did it. <laughs> I know. We'll see how that pans out. Yeah, we'll see how that works. So thank you, everybody, for voting yeah. and participating. And, um, yes. Every, um, I will say, yes, um, just because I've been asked this a number of times, and it's the curious question, Oh sure. Um, the percentage of uh, in-person uh, votes was 28%, and over 71, almost 72%, uh, was by mail. Wonderful. So, so thank you all for yeah. that and uh, made it much easier to yes. handle the day for yeah. sure and safer for everybody. So congratulations to all the winners um, and thank you for everybody that ran and didn't run, didn't win because um, it's participation which is important and we need people to Absolutely. step up and be able to run and um, keep keep trying to do that. We need we need a lot of people to, to run the town so we appreciate everybody trying to do that and, um, and running a good election. So um, I think the first order of business is to reorganize the board. Um, oh, she has a next one. Do you to run this one more? Was <laughs> okay, I guess not. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. So um, we call the meeting to order. Um, our first scheduled hearing and, and appearances is um, Barbara Hancock, town treasurer, um, to talk about the sewer wastewater treatment and USDA interim borrowing plan. Yes. So how are you? Great. Good. We've talked a great deal about the projects. Now we have to talk about the money. <laughs> Um, so we've incurred um, some cost, and so we're going to have to um, start our borrowing before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, so we kind of waited to, you know, see what we needed, what whatever, <laughs> and get all our ducks in order. And we got a cash flow from uh, Dave Prickett's organization, yes. and so um, based on that cash flow, I kind of. Uh, figured maybe three borrowings, and they're designated by the little slash off to the right yes. of, the, um, of the table. 
And so the first one being um, tomorrow, actually, I have it set up to go to bid tomorrow, um, just so that we can kind of turn it around. Um, mm -hmm. You guys should have the paperwork by the end of next week so I can get it in mail by the 22nd so we have the money by the 29th. Perfect. So just, just under the wire. Slide right in. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we're really talking about um, two loans tomorrow uh, going out to bid. Uh, the million dollar, which is actually going to go out for 900000 Yep. Um, and then this other borrowing, which I'm, it's this eight, is my recommendation. Um, I did want to appear before all of you so that we could kind of, yeah, talk you about know, it. toss it around in case right. anyone had questions or a different idea. Um, so I, I kind of put the first slash mark that totals eight hundred and fifty-two thousand yep. um, right after May of two thousand twenty-one. So um, as we were thinking about borrowing, um, it seems like the rates are pretty good right now. So yes. I said, well, let's not go short. Let's go long for the year. Um, so eight hundred and fifty-two thousand brings us through May. June, we're expected to have to spend uh, almost an equal amount, $766,000. Um, I didn't think it, would, it warranted us taking out that much money for a whole year of interest and what have you um, to capitalize on the rates. And if right. we do go over a million dollars, I do have to have um, town uh, bond council has to do a I don't know, a note or notice or review or some kind of formal some cost. thing. Yeah. Under a million, we don't have to. So I figured that's another fee mm -hmm. that maybe we can postpone until next right. time. Right. So anyway, yeah. I want to do the most amount without being excessive right. and having, you know, $1.5 million, $1.6 million Just um, interest yeah. until next June. So right. cut it off at May, 852000 We stay under the bond Yep. Um, you know, we already have approval from bond council, so we're we not do. avoiding anything. It's just that right. every time you go out for a million dollars, they have to, um, do some you know, do another review. Yeah, and we pay something. a fee. So, yeah. 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 Well, yep. I forget the name of that. <laughs> is the fee is the fee being reduced at all because of the financial situation around, or is it just a flat fee? I haven't revisited that, um, but it's um, it's associated with the amounts and duration and right. so I don't think so <laughs> yeah pretty much. but I'm hoping that the rates are on our side you know I, oh no the rates like are it. on yeah. our side yeah. Yeah. I mean I get that you know so. it feels like you'd want to oh let's borrow the whole thing right now but right but it then would just be sitting there the money you'd be paying in interest would would eat up any interest. savings that you kind of correct took on right correct. yeah so I kind of um we're expecting or hoping or anticipating, if you will, that the project will be done April-ish of 23. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of set it up for a borrowing this June, next June, and then the following June. So kind of three, um, you know, issuance, if you will. Yep. And uh, so 852000 come next June. I went ahead and tucked June in next time. Yep. Um, so rolling over the 852 and adding the next uh, June 21 to June 22 payments, we would be borrowing just shy of 7.5. Yes. Um, all these numbers have no pay down in them. So right. we if we still. whatever we end up deciding to pay down, then obviously we wouldn't roll that over. Right. Um, we don't have to pay down until um, we have to make a payment in 23. Right. And it's like thirty thousand dollars. So that's like the minimum. So. So we wouldn't have to, but I don't think that's our plan. To, and that payment would be to, after we, we close the loan with USDA, or to this band? This, this band, yeah. okay, yep. And the reason I mention that, too, is the next, the third band, if you will, mm -hmm. would uh, simply roll over the other two that we borrowed, and then an additional four point, whatever the, the rest of the project adds up to. Right. Um, I like the June date, too, because it's the end of the year. We can yep. kind of, you know... We can budget for that. It budget, makes sense to everybody. How much do we want to make a payment down? You know, right. we, we will have already voted at town meeting, and, right. and so it would be all set to, yeah, to go forward good. with. So I just thought it was a good time of the year to, yeah, no, to be solid on our numbers. Yep. Uh, so if everything goes to the penny, we would be borrowing um, 11173501 yep. on that June 22nd, okay. 20th. Okay. 20th. Okay. 
20 to 22. Mm -hmm. If we didn't pay anything down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, it should, uh, according uh, to this plan, this button up people, people, but, you know, things yeah. usually, you, you might have to have you another, have another um, yeah. ban. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 this really and this is really, to clarify, just to clarify, this, this is all one of the project. Yeah. We have phase two that we're still going to work on after that. And then mm -hmm. we, we have to look at some resiliency, resiliency stuff, to, stuff the, the, to the tanks. And right. um, we've also realized that our effluent pipe going out to the river is in really bad shape and it's undersized i think it's 12 inch there's mm -hmm. 24 inch coming into the plant right. 12 inch going out to the river how did that happen uh, just built in the 70s mm -hmm. i don't know so this is all the stuff they're looking at you know when they're when they're doing the design work so um is, is that hugely and it's under the we, water so yeah. we're hoping that we can kind of tie that into a you, you know, into a. I mean, I mean that wasn't MVP. that wasn't on any no, project that wasn't, list. No, it wasn't. I mean, there's still stuff we're not doing at the plant. I mean, it sounds uh -huh. like, you know, for that kind of money, you'd have a brand new plant, but you don't. I mean, there's all kinds of other okay. stuff that we. Well, you know, maybe we're using. maybe we can figure out something for that too. Hopefully, yeah, a grant yeah. program, and and you know, maybe there's infrastructure programs by the next administration or. I know. You know, we're keeping our eye open for Barbara, all that I, stuff. I, I, I was just going to say. Still, mm -hmm. Just to clarify, we still have another plant that is just as, it's worse shape than mm -hmm. what we're working on. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I like the way you laid this out mm -hmm. because it will be easier for us mm -hmm. if there is an infrastructure program mm -hmm. just to roll all our planning into the, mm -hmm. right. that plan. Right. And as you talk about phases, I just want to emphasize, too, that this is kind of like a first phase of, of financing as yes. well. So once the project is done... And we've borrowed all that money. Then we get the grant money. Yes. And the remainder or the difference, we would um, go bond with right. USDA. With USDA. So yeah. all of that is a perfect case scenario. <laughs> Correct. So it all could change based on bids going up yep. and, you know, that yep. kind of stuff. But it's the best anticipation So these are all have. based on just, you know, projections and... Mm -hmm. um, yep, may change. Right. Yep. Well, you know, it's... Hurricane it's season. Plan. It's a hurricane season, you know. Could be FEMA replacement. <laughs> you never know. You yeah, never I did know. Um, submit this to my fiscal advisor at Unibank. Yep. Um, and she did prepare this other piece of paper. Yep. Uh, which USDA that. wanted. It's uh, kind of like an interim borrowing agreement, or this is what we, our plan is. Um, so I, I do need to submit that yeah. uh, to USDA. Um, so that's why I wanted to meet with you all tonight and um so do you want us to vote that your president to vote on the whole presentation or well, just vote not, on the band or what would you like us to do it's not necessary because you will um be given the band paperwork for which you'll okay. vote on and sign right and then i'll send it into the state and they kind of a, um prove it at uh, approve it at the bureau of accounts okay and then so that comes back. I, I, I would say that, that yeah, I would plan. I just I wanted to this is good. float it by okay. so that, no, you know, I mean, this is a big project a big and project. in case somebody had an idea that I hadn't thought of or didn't know about. Or, no, it feels, yeah. it feels right. Yeah. Uh, so I, and, and there's plenty of opportunities for intervention mm -hmm. if we have opportunities for grants. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. what I wanted. I wanted it laid out so that you could at any time mm -hmm. flip it over to a grant situation mm -hmm. yeah this this paper here um does reflect the grant way over to the side yep. there so. yeah. 2.6 yeah yep and and again that we hope that's what we're getting that's you know what right. they said but <laughs> I was say, this as we've all... been talking to you know it really is... depends on what the mar you know right what the world is doing and do they have the money and this is so, the plan <laughs> this is the plan this right. is what we hope for this is what they've said they would do for us and yeah. We hope, you know, until the ink's dry, you really just don't have that. But. Right, right. Well, I know, and they do say that a lot of times. I mean, we were talking about borrowing, and they said, well, you should yeah. wait till the bids go out. And we, well, we like, don't we have an cover. opportunity to do that. We're already spending money. So. Yeah, we're already spending And the fiscal designing. year's ending, and we didn't want it to affect our free cash. Right. Um, so. Um, no, I think this feels. This makes sense. Again, it's that's a similar program that to. Orange is doing with the same yeah. project. <laughs> I mean, they're doing the same kind of work. And, yeah, yeah. You know, so it feels like we have it's, somebody a few months ahead of us. We're so we lucky to have them ahead, yes. so I'm kind of, you know, drafting behind them. And yes. Going, well, no, what did they do? How'd that right. go? And it's yeah. smart. Yeah. 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 So I, I got their interim uh, financing agreement uh, to yep. look over before uh, I discussed it with Margaret at Unibank. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. good thank good. you, Barbara. Okay. Well, thank go you. On. Yeah, that's great. Okay. okay. The bids are going to go out tomorrow. 
Um, and they'll be due, I think I have it due next Monday. Okay. So um, then we'll know how good the rates really are. <laughs> right, right. Get a, get a real. And uh, I'll get, hopefully, are you you're having a meeting? We, we'll have one on the 17th. We have one Friday. Friday. Okay. The sure. 17th, um, I'll speak we'll to work. Casey and make sure she has um, the paperwork, the band paperwork okay. for you guys to sign. Yep. I would expect that it'd be ready. Okay, good. That's actually yeah. perfect timing. Yeah. And if you need anything else, just let us know. We'll, yes. We'll come in or do Yeah, no, need. I'm glad. Um, thank you for having me and yeah, talking it over. Yeah, thank you for coming in tonight and going over that stuff. Okay, anything right. else for me? No. No. Okay. No. Thank you all. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Thank you all and your staff for doing, doing a great job. Um, Thanks, Barbara. Awesome. Is Chris Curtis on the phone? Yes, I am. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Good. I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. I want to apologize publicly for having you pull your hair out today about an MVP program. Um, so, oh, thank, thank you. No, well, thanks for just you know bringing it to light for us because you know sometimes we just roll along and we do things we in a vacuum and we don't always know. You know, Chris, it's, we're learning this as we go yeah. here. I'm no expert. Did, so did thank you, you get, for yours. Did you get my message that it's it's not for this round? So we're, I, I did, and thank okay. you for that. Yeah, we're yeah. going to hold that. off on that. And, um, and just, so that, just to that was good news. I guess to clarify for everybody, we've been doing a lot of MVP grants because, and Chris has been extremely instrumental in all of that, kind of keeping all the projects going and helping us write the, the grants and manage them and all this stuff um, and the projects. And, um, you know, my fault, I neglected to tell him because I'm, I'm thinking of sewer as a completely different project, but we always talked about whenever we could, we're doing obviously sewer upgrades and we thought, could we raise the walls and there's an influent pipe to the river that, that's in bad shape that would need to get changed as well. And we thought, could we roll that into an MVP program? I didn't realize you couldn't double them up or there was a number. I just not, I'm ignorant about how that all works. So I had our engineers kind of, they said, oh, well, we could put something together for you. And I didn't realize that it would conflict with what, what uh, Chris had already been working on. So I talked to them today. They said, no problem. We'll wait until whenever you, I would love it, if, you know, and whatever you need. But we would love it if you, um, when you thought it was appropriate to touch base with them and see about another phase and when it would fit in and how that would work, um, just to try to recoup some money of that project down the road whenever you think it's appropriate. Chris, what I thought yeah, is well, that Yeah, it sounds they... like it would be sounds like it would be very appropriate for the next round and right. um, you know, it it is something that needs to go into the town's MVP plan if you hope to get funding for it. Okay. So we're going to be we're going to be talking about that plan update tonight. So okay. This might be a good time to to consider yeah. um, adding that into the mix. Great. That'd be great. Also, yeah. the one advantage of having the majority of the grant done is we have a, a really good estimate of the cost. And um, so we just have to build the story to fit it in. We can vote tonight that we want yeah, to, to, include, to, to include it. And then we can do the public that. hearing and then and the committee work and all that kind of stuff to get ready for the next round. Yeah, just give us time yeah. to put our ducks in a row and whatever you think yeah. it's appropriate to, um, to do it. Because um, the project's not going to start until 2022 or something like that anyways. But, you know. That's why, that's why okay. we, can't, we can't do it this round anyway because the money has to be spent. That's what I was thinking yeah. earlier. And, they were, and they, this is their first go at it too. And they were just thinking, sure, we'll try to help you get some money off this. So, yeah, thank you for bringing that to light. Um, that helped a lot too. Yeah, this yeah, this scrap. Oh, ground good. Has yeah, that's a that's that's a great outcome. I I think it'll be you know be a viable project for the next round. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Good. Um, so yeah, so updates on the Deerfield um, MVP plan. Next so next up. So CRB yeah. is what, Trevor? CRB. Um, uh, I don't know. I did not. I think. I'm not sure. If, uh, Chris, um, since CRB workshop, is that the um, resiliency workshop there? That we're oh, 
Y- yes, exactly. Yep. Um, community resilience building workshop. Yeah, perfect. Right. Was that are the you w- looking at the Are you looking at the top recommendations? To yes. Improve yes. Resilience? Yes. That's what we have in front of us. That, yep, that's that's the one that yeah. happened yeah. at the Climate Day, right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So when we When we initially did um, the workshop, we came up with a top ten list of priority strategies that the town wanted to pursue. I've got a whole lot of yeah, other talking here. Going I don't on know on the if, phone here. I don't know if FCAT can do something. We've not ever had that kind of feedback. So go ahead. Try that again. Okay. Mic away. Oh, that's better. I think that's better now. Great. Um, I couldn't hear anything for a while there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so that we initially came up with a list of top ten um, strategies. The, the MVP plan has been updated several times since that initial workshop. And now we're proposing to update it um, again so that it, it clearly reflects the, the projects that are the town's current priorities and, and especially the ones that are in the grant application that you're going to be voting on tonight. Um, so what I attempted to do was um, not only to add those new strategies in, but also to pr- uh, sort of reorder the priorities so that uh, the ones that we are currently pursuing funding for rise to the to the top of the priority list mm-hmm. um, so if we look at the list um, we, we've always had culverts was the top um, priority for the town <coughs> from, from the very beginning and that doesn't change um, but um, implementing the green infrastructure policy number two um, designing and constructing the green infrastructure improvements number three the stream restoration and wetland restoration number four, um, and the healthy soils initiative uh, number seven. Mm-hmm. Those are those are things that have sort of moved up the list from the previous version. Okay. Again, to reflect that um, that's what we want to pursue funding for um, now. And I just want to, you know, to run this by you all. We, we need Excuse to me. we need to formally vote to. To amend the MVP plan um, and and resubmit that to EOEEA, and it would be very timely to do that now, um, just before the grant application goes in. Mm-hmm. Do, do you so, think it's- um, I wanted to just see if you if if you concur with the list and and the, the prioritization scheme. Do you think this is a time now, or is it? Should we wait to um, add the resiliency work at the wastewater treatment plant? I think it's a good time to do it, actually. As long as we're amending it, we we can easily make that amendment. Okay. And, you know, we... Um, I would like to get a little information about it. Of course. Yep. Um, And and I could put you in touch with our engineer and Justin Justin and Dave Prickett, who have been, you know, working on the engineering of the project. And we were trying to... the, The idea was to make the the project more resilient to flooding and um and then also to address a um the uh flow of the flow out of the plant into the river the pipe that is like from the 70s is undersized and um i think there's 24 inch pipe going into the plant and a 12 inch pipe going out to the river um and that pipe is just kind of deteriorating and it's kind of under the river right now so it needs to kind of be redone um so we, we thought those two items of raising the walls of the clarifiers um, and possibly the aeration tanks, but I think it's just the clarifiers. I, I've got to double check on that. Um, we're just to kind of raise it those up It was flood, a bit flood resiliency. Flood resiliency, because, you know, at one point, I think they had to bring in emergency one time, a bunch of dump truck of sand to build the berm up there a bit, but it's still, you know, it's the whole plant is pretty low. If we get a really bad flood, you know, it's critical infrastructure. Um, we just thought if we're doing this work and redoing the clarifier, um, we don't want it washed away. Yeah, we just thought if, if, if a, a couple of feet would help, one, it helps um, reduce the freezing up in that clarifier. And that was one of the problems we had is that um, we had a really cold stretch about a year and a half ago and the clarifier froze and the arm got bent and that's the whole issue why we're why we're rep- replacing the one clarifier we have right now and um if the if the 
you know, if, if those are up a little bit, um, it just creates a little warmer area. Um, they're not so exposed to the elements and um, would reduce freezing a bit. We also talked about covers at some point too, and that's still in the design kind of decision, whether we'd put covers on top of the clarifiers or not. So, um, okay. so those are kind of the areas that we're looking at. We didn't know if those would be, you know, available for, for funding through MVP or not. So they are. I, uh, I think that would be, okay. um, and it certainly seems like something that should go into the MVP plan. Um, I think it would be, it'd be a good addition. Um, I can make that addition and you could vote on that, um, tonight. Uh, there, there is an item in here right now um, in the plan that talks about flood proofing the uh, wastewater and water treatment plants is number 14 on the list. Oh. Not exactly what you're yeah. talking about, um, but it's, you know, it's something that we could, we could add more detail to. That would be perfect. Yep. Yeah, and okay. whether, it, whether you think it needs to slide up based on whenever we, you know, if you talk to however you think it should fit into a, a, a request, whether it's next request or, you know, how that. What we have to do is yeah. we have to get from the engineers, when do you think? You'd be able to spend the money. Well, the you have, we only have a, a, the problem with this MVP program is you, you just get one year and that's right. it. You gotta spend it. They want you to invest well, thought, in it. But more. I thought they, didn't they change that, Chris? I thought when I was looking at this stuff, they extended they because of COVID. Years. Oh, because of COVID, they extended some stuff. I see. Because when I was looking at uh, at it originally, I saw it's, like it's, FY21, FY22. But it's because it was extended. Okay. Most most of the money has one year. That's it. They, um, yeah, this year it is a little a little different, um, and and because um, because of COVID, and, and and I think generally because of. Um, the com complexity of, of projects these days. Um, they, they have given the option to communities to have projects end on June 30th, 2021 or June 30th, 2022. So um, I don't know if, if you have the uh, budget, uh, <coughs> the detailed budget um, available to you. It's an Excel spreadsheet yes. that um, I put together. Um, it's there somewhere here. It's in here. Yeah. Is that one of the handouts that you have? We have a, a gigantic handout, so I'm gonna yeah. uh, just take me a minute to go through. God, I, I, I just hit my face. Here. Gonna lick my lips. Scroll here. down. It's in there. <laughs> we're scrolling. No, we're, I know. Um, I do. Yeah, I have the amount. It is here somewhere. That's the application. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. You have to go past the pictures. The Here application is. is pretty long. Yeah. Uh, and you said it was an Excel spreadsheet? It's a, it's a very complex. Right here, yeah. Trevor. It's, uh, oh, 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 I did see that. Sorry. It's the one with all the pretty colors? Yeah, so you, yeah yep, this one. Got it. Right here. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, it's the table with the pretty colors. Okay. <laughs> all right. Exactly. So you can see that um, the first task, which is the stream and wetland restoration project, um, for the area up near Wapping Road, that would be in the in the first fiscal year, um, finishing up June 30th, 2021. The other projects are all June 30th, 2022 mm -hmm. projects. So the green parking lots, we need more time to be able to do that. And um, the uh, the green infrastructure policy implementation makes sense to continue throughout the, the full extent of the grant as well as the high school science programming and the Healthy Soils Initiative. So we're hoping... And then... Um, oh, we're hoping construction on the plant to begin somewhere around uh, June of 2021 and end March of 2023. That's kind of our... That's about when things okay. take place. For the whole thing. For the whole, you know, well, the first, yeah, for the first phase. Yeah. And maybe this... I don't know. Yeah, how it fits into phase two, or so that so that would still make sense, I think, to to apply for that in the next round because that would fit that time frame okay. pretty pretty well. Great, I think. And and I know that Dave um, Prickett, the engineer, might help with that a little bit because we do have a second phase which we haven't even really designed yet. 
that'll be at that plan as well. Okay. But um, so yeah. Okay. Um, so maybe we should stick with you know the MVB plan update um, mm -hmm. just because that's the first real action item. Yep. Does everybody um, agree with the list of, of prioritized projects? Do you you want to change any of the order? Do you want to add anything other than what we've just said, which was more details on the wastewater treatment plant? Yeah, and just if, um, you, if you think that needs to move at all, I'm. I'm Happy to I, I, I would I you. would move that one up, yeah, okay. Trevor. I, I think it makes sense to move it up into the top ten somewhere. Yep, I'll leave that you know up to you wherever you think it fits in best. Can we change the wording on it to include the South Deerfield plant? Um, the wording on on fourteen. Yeah, the flood to South to uh, flood proof the town's wastewater and water treatment plants, or or just call that the South Deerfield. Well. It, 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 it talks mostly about the deer field. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah so to not mention South right to flush that out more about South yeah. Deerfield. Yep. Okay. Well, it does yeah. say the Deerfield wastewater treatment yeah. plant on the Connecticut River. Yeah, at one sixteen. But yeah, maybe we can freshen that up a little bit more. That should be the South Deerfield okay. wastewater, and then Old Deerfield needs to have do the same thing. Yeah. Actually, Chris, we you would want to add the old Deerfield. We'd be doing the same thing to old Deerfield, potentially. Okay. Or not. Or not. <laughs> it just, I think you okay, need to. Okay, well, we should put it in the plan if, yeah. it, if yes. it seems possible that you may be addressing yes. that. I would put that up, you know, right. in the well, area of like pipe right, it down, it's right not near the Healthy it. Soils Initiative, um, you know, maybe number six or seven or something like that. Okay, I'm just going to make a, make a note um, that uh, anybody calling in, um, if you could mute your uh, phone calls using star six, and then when you need to speak, just unmute using star six. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll make that we'll make that change to the list. Um, is there anything that you feel needs to be changed other than that? Not at the moment, no. I mean, it's a pretty good, pretty good list. Okay. Yeah. I think I would, you know what, I would bump it up to, I think I would bump it up to um, nine, uh, I mean, ten. Switch, you know. Okay. Take ten down to 17 and then push that up because it's not something we're actually going to apply for to another year. And... We don't, you know, we might not even end up applying if there's an infrastructure project that mm -hmm. we could do. So I don't want it to bump. We've already done the Mosquito District. We've already done the Reverse 911. You know, the tree management program is all, that's nice. Implement no-till, that's fine. You know, the other ones are sort of like wish list ones. So it should be ahead of the right. wish list. It should be ahead of the wish list, but not ahead of the ones that we're actually still working on right now because it's not one that we're going to work on yet. Well, right. Yeah. Okay. I need to fit it in. Sure. That yeah. makes sense. So then, then what happens is, is as we get into the, um, we we start kicking these things off. Then, then it's, it works its way up. Mm -hmm. It makes sense from working its way up. I, it should definitely be ahead of all the wish list ones. Okay. Yeah, really wherever you think it should be. So do you, the spot. Do you want to, um, I guess I would ask the board to consider taking a vote to, um, to adopt the revised MVP plan and to submit that to the state. Okay. Um, I will make that motion to adopt the amended plan. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Any comment? I, I, I do want to thank you, Chris. This is very complete. No, that's great. Oh, no no thank comment. You. Um, so, um, all those in favor? Aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Thank you very much.
great. So, so there, on the MVP five grant, there are um, there are three things that uh, are really action items. Uh, one is approving the submittal of the grant itself. Uh, one is approving submittal of a letter of support um, to go with the grant. Mm -hmm. And the third one is approving the certification of the match for the project. Uh, we originally were supposed to be submitting this grant tomorrow. And as you probably have heard, the, they extended the grant deadline uh, for a week. So it's now due on uh, June 18th. Okay. Uh, I think that's sort of both, both good and bad news in a certain way. Uh, we uh, and we were ready to go and probably could have met the original deadline. Um, so the extension may actually, you know, not be a benefit to us in the sense that it helps other communities, but not so much us. Mm. But um, in any case, uh, we'll be ready to go. We have um, we have the grant almost entirely complete at this point. It was a pretty pretty elaborate application this year, I must say. Yes. Every year they seem to make it more, more complicated and more difficult. So, more uh, competition. As you can see, it's a it's a big long package um, uh, with lots of attachments. And we've gotten good support, good letters of support yeah. with uh, with Carolyn's help, particularly. Uh, we've gotten support letters from a lot of different organizations in town. Uh, I think most of the application is finished with the you know, exception of a few minor details. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about the, um, the match certification. And that's uh, in attachment G of the grant application. I'm not sure if you have it also separately as a separate handout. Um, uh, no. I'm looking through. These are all the photos. Um, is it at, uh, let's see. There's our letter of support. Um, you said it's G? Attachment G, yeah. And it, uh, what does it, uh, what does it look like? Just so I can, when I come across that here, I, I have the list of the projects and then it lists the subtotal, ta subtask total and then the grant amount and then the cash match amount in-kind services, that kind of thing? Yes, that, yep. that, that's it, yep. Okay, yep. It yep. Statements of match. Yep. And, yeah. Oh, thanks, sweetie. So as oh, you yeah. can see, um, there is a, a project total of $1,862,000. Um, and the match is 472000 <laughs> Yep. Of that 472000 um, 334,000 of that total is uh, Frontier Regional High School for the green green parking lot there. Yes. And um, I already have a signed <coughs> match me. certification for, for that uh, for that amount from Darius Modesto, which yep. is if you kind of scroll down, it's just below the one that you would be signing. Yes. Uh, so the town portion of the match is uh, 119,000 in cash, um, and then uh, there's a $14,000 amount of in-kind. Yep. Um, and then the balance is covered by uh, a cash contribution from Atlantic Furniture of $4,500. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. Yep. Which, uh, yeah, it was really helpful. That's really great. It was wonderful, yep. Uh, yep. So okay. I think uh, those numbers are, are Pretty much final at this point, and all and all set. Okay. Um, so I'll entertain. If you're okay with yeah with how they look. So I'll entertain a motion to submit the grant uh, to. I don't know if we want these all at one time. Um, do you want them separately? So I'll make a motion to approve and uh, sign the statement of match for the municipal vulnerability preparedness program for FY21, as stated here. We just went over. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those. Trevor. Oh, hi. Yes. Um, it's Casey. I just wanted to let you know there's a 
before you approve it, there's a couple rates we need to change with Chris. I just hadn't, hadn't been able to talk to him about it yet. Okay. So could you approve it as to form and we'll correct the rate? Sounds good. Yep. So I make a motion to approve to form. I'll and second that. With Casey's <laughs> adjustment on the rates. And then, so any further discussion? All those in favor? They will for my. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, and then I'll make a motion to um, approve this letter of support from the town. Um, um, the only problem is w there's one typo. In the uh, letter of support? Yeah, we hope to sue the oh, MVP yeah, grant. Is this, the MVP grant. No, it's, uh, it's to be used, the MVP <laughs> grant. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix that right now, Carolyn. All right, thank you. <laughs> I did, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to pick on you, Casey. I no, know. That's no, 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 no. That's me, not running spell check. <laughs> well, spell check. No, spell check is the correct word. It's just that we want to use <laughs> the MVP use grant to leverage further work. <laughs> okay. So with that amendment, uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Carolyn. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. So I'll sign that one <laughs> once that's fixed. Um, and then. Um, three signatures on it? Yes, there yes. are three signatures on that. Me, yep, all three of us would sign that. And then I also have a. Um, uh, let's see, and a motion to submit the grant. With, yes. With all this um, supporting detail. Uh, do you want me to second or make the motion? You can make the motion. Yeah. Oh, okay, I make the motion. We submit the grant for the total project amount of one million eight hundred sixty-one thousand five hundred and seventy-six dollars. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All I those know. in favor? Dave Wolf and I. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. It looks like we are good to go. Oh, man, I am so excited. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, Chris. Yes, let's hope. I think it's a really good Me project. Too. It is. It it's really good. It. it sounds really good. Well, I thank you very much for your support and, and all of your help and help getting the, uh, the letters of support and the contribution. Um, it's a it's a big it's a big project. It's, yep. it's a sizable budget. It's going to be it's going to be a tough one to get funded. But yep. uh, I think it's a competitive application, and um, hopefully we'll we'll see some uh, some positive news. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Oh, my question: Do they do they um, do they approve in full, or would they also just approve in portion, or do you do you, is it all or nothing? I don't. I guess I just don't know. It, you know, I had that question too. I, I, I would like to think that you know, if they, if they thought the dollar amount was too big, they might fund a portion of it. Right. Um, but I'm not really sure. Okay. Just curious. Uh, about that. All right. It depends. In the on past, our, our grants have been funded in full. But right. Right. Uh, I think also it depends, uh, Chris, how much, how much money people have. Um, you know, the governor has available. You know, when he goes to do it. And this has been a hard right. year. No, no, right. he's finishing off this year, which is fine. Oh, okay. I mean, we have COVID, but all the COVID stuff is really going to be in fiscal 21. Yeah. All right. So, I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, if, if, I, if I could, I would just mention also on the MVP front um, that the Mill Village Road culvert project has begun construction. Yes. Um, probably you, you know this already, and maybe you've, you've noticed uh, yes. that they yes. closed the road off and, I took the and detour it's underway. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty exciting. It is very exciting. Um, yeah. I have to admit. And all the other pieces are moving forward. Nine years in the I'm making. Sorry? I said Nine years in the making, right? No, almost nine years. This was yeah. August of 2011. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that is a long time. It is. It is a long time. So that'll be exciting, and we'll and we'll have that you know done pretty quickly. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. They were hoping maybe a week or a week and a half or so it was going to be closed. Um, um, so just for the general public, yeah. the area will be shut down for a little while. Do we have a start date on the Kelleher Drive one yet? We we don't yet, um, but uh, you know I think that that 
contract is now moving forward, and um, I'll try to get you a, I'll, I'll email you a start date when I have one. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, I know that that was extended because of COVID, so we're, we're all set. Chris, I just wanted to check with you on that. Yes, we are. Okay. We, we are in, in good shape on that now. Um, well, there's some positive things of COVID. Yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> think, right. I right. think we would have had a little bit of trouble trying to and get we're, that done. We're going to get a we're going to we're going to get a price estimate for the uh, the stone facing for the culvert that you voted on. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll, I'll also I will I'll also get you that information as soon as we have it. Okay. My faith was restored that Trevor was not picking <laughs> ugly choices. <laughs> I was like, Carolyn, what's your taste? <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, Trevor, that is so ugly. I cannot believe that you chose you were that. You at the wrong order of photos. So. Yeah. That's too yeah. Funny. Too funny. Okay. And in the end, we all picked the exact same one. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, it, it was, was fine. Yeah, it was which, fine. Hopefully, it's in our budget, so it'd be good. I mean, it just, it's a focal yeah. point. Everybody yeah. sees it. It'd, it'd be nice if it. It's right, in the, it's right, it's right across. The from, monument. Yeah, it's right next to the frontier. Yeah. I mean, it would just be really nice if it was attractive. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It would be there for hopefully so 100 thank years. So okay. well, thank, thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's all, that's all I have for you okay. tonight. Thank you for yeah. all your support. Thank you for all you're doing. Appreciate it. Okay, have okay. a great night. So, you too. Take care. Our next um, next hearing and appearance, well, just appearance, would be uh, Paul Shevsky from uh, from DDIC, uh, Deerfield Economic Development. Um, yep. Hey, how are you? I am good. How are you? Good. Welcome. Thank you. I uh, appreciate the time we had the other day to speak, and also sure. I had a, a conversation with David just to update all of you on the uh, things in the park. Mm -hmm. We. Um, are scheduled to have our uh, annual meeting uh, based on the bylaws uh, that were drawn out about 45 years ago that we follow to the letter. Um, at the park, we uh, do it down on, uh, we're going to do until we can get back in, into the, uh, the offices, and I know Trevor, you and I had that conversation, mm -hmm. um, understanding. Um, but we have it down at the end of Industrial Drive West at the cul-de-sac at that parcel that uh, that pretty much runs from the end of the cul-de-sac over to the Waitley border, the Waitley town line. So um, we socially distance, but we, uh, our bylaws require that we have the annual meeting, election of officers. Um, we have to select, uh, well, the agenda is, is posted um, online and also hopefully, I, I don't know, I know it is, Jen uh, emailed me today that she had posted it up on the, uh, on the board. So. We're set for that at 8.45 tomorrow morning. Um, so uh, I guess I'm looking for the reappointment, of not only myself, but also Frank and, and uh, John. Um, we've got a number of things going on in the park. Uh, one, one crucial thing right now is uh, starting late last year, we worked with David and, and Sharon Roars before she passed. Unfortunately, um, we were able to take lot 10, which is that lot that never sold. And as I explained to Trevor, um, you know, you can cut a pie into so many pieces. And unfortunately, there's always that one piece that just doesn't come out right. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically, we were, uh, David and Sharon were approached by uh, the owners of Worthington Assembly. And long story short, we were able to without giving up the protective covenants nor the uh, anything that the way that the, the park was written the way the edict uh, was created by Nick Filler and also the the original uh, group of uh, of Dedic, um that the folks there at with Worthington Assembly uh, will have to come to us on December 1st early December and report what their plans are with with the uh, what we call lot 10 uh, that's far down on the end, just at the, at the base of Sugarloaf. And um, their plan is to build a uh, either a one- or two-story small, uh, I want to say like a, 
I want to say a butler building, you know, a metal building. Mm-hmm. Uh, currently, they're, they're established on Industrial Drive East in one of the buildings uh, that's owned by uh, uh, Leased. They lease it from uh, Development Associates out of Agawam. Uh, Travis Ward, who I have a close relationship with, as uh, a general manager or whatever for, for the uh, Industrial Drive East. And uh, I don't think he knows that they're, they're, they're looking to do this, but basically they are looking to construct and move out of where they're leasing and create their own uh, uh, manufacturing facility. They do uh, specialty um, circuit board construction. Um, it's just not your standard stuff. I guess it, apparently it's, it's built, to, built to order kind of thing. Um, Paul, so that's that, what I'm we're hoping gonna, in the next. Paul, I'm just going to interrupt real quick and just uh, clarify um, just sure. for everybody on, on the um, TV or on the phone. Um, speaking is Paul Oshefsky, sure. and he's currently the chair of the DDIC board. Sorry about that. I just want to make sure yeah. I had that clear. So, Thank you. No, 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 no. I appreciate that. I should have identified myself. Oh, that's okay. But um, so that's what we're waiting for that first December 1st to see what uh, these folks are planning. Um, in the next, we're hoping within either 2021 or 2022 that uh, whatever they're planning on developing and building uh, is uh, built, you know, uh, is successful. And um, so uh, we continue to um, uh, manage the park like uh, we were charged uh, in the last, and I quoted, I quoted. Um, I quoted uh, Trevor, when I spoke to him, that, you know, DDIC, um, we, we get no funding from the town. We, all our operating expenses are paid. We're reimbursed by the, 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 the park property owners. It's, you know, it's almost like a condo association. Uh, you pay based on a prorated share, based on the acreage that you own within the park. Um, we are current with all our reimbursements. Um, through 20, from fiscal 2015 through fiscal year 2020, we have spent close to $34,000 on park maintenance projects, uh, physical improvements, the biggest one being uh, the uh, restoration and rebuilding of the, um, the, uh, the swale, the, uh, e- the utility easement and swale and into the retention pond that was built for a 100-year event um, when, they, when they built the park. And that land, that swale and, and um, uh, uh, retention pond is on uh, Atlantic furniture land or what used to be Ingersoll Rand and we have an easement in that and that's our responsibility so we spent over $18,000 uh, working with Sokolowski Landscaping who subcontracted the services out but we cleaned that all out uh, we, d- we employed the services of a, a local con- uh, mason and we rebuilt all the storm grates um, we also did remapping um, of all the, uh, you know, where the boundaries are between, you know, that, that, that uh, establish where the easements are for the utility swale and the retention pond, as well as we um, uh, reestablished where the border is on the Deerfield Waitley line. And um, so at least, you know, we know when we look. And also in the last four years, uh, from 20, fiscal year 2017 through uh, fiscal year 2020, uh, the industrial park property owners have paid uh, a little over $846,000 in taxes directly to the town of Deerfield, and that is real estate, uh, fire, and water. That does not include uh, excise tax that, such as Jeff Goulet would pay, uh, Yankee Candle uh, in, the, in the Bartlett building, so anyways, we've been busy. The, the, the one thing, you know, and like I say, I, as Trevor and I talked about, and I also talked with David, uh, Frank and John were very instrumental in helping, uh, actually the whole board was, six of us, um, in alleviating the concerns of David and Sharon, you know, before she passed, to, to, to get that property squared away, which we did, and we're so glad we did. It, it really was uh, a good thing. And... Uh, Basically, we, we use counsel. We, we employ our own counsel, uh, Full City Hardy out of Springfield, who is very versed in uh, edict uh, uh, law and uh, the governance of it. Um, and we, we've just, and I, and I probably I apologize, Trevor, I'm sort of going to be going down the same 
no, path okay. that you and I talked about. But fine, but we, we also we also established you know since since DDIC was reconstituted in uh, 2013 2014 depending on who you talk to. But anyway, so let's let's say in the last seven years, um, we brought uh, and thanks to Felicity uh, who negotiated because you've got the basically the Verizon and the Comcast of the world arguing with each other about uh, location of poles and lines and whatever, but we brought fi high-speed fiber optic, not the cable, but fiber optic uh, along the Industrial Drive West that Jeff Goulet needed very, very importantly for his uh, trucking business with the GPS, the tracking of the trucks and all that. Uh, I know Mark Vallone tied into it for Atlantic Furniture. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's there, it's available. Uh, there also is ut the same utilities on Industrial Drive East. Um, done a, just done a ton of stuff. Uh, there is no, and, and I know we talked about this, um, Trevor, earlier, and I probably touched upon it with you as well, David. Um, in terms of economic development in the park, there, there are no other parcels um, for sale unless someone sells. Now, I will say on Industrial Drive West, Bob Bartlett has been trying to sell, and it is listed with a commercial real estate firm down in Springfield, uh, where Yankee Candle leases the uh, property for, uh, you know, for their warehousing or whatever. But so far, he has had no takers. So right now, you know, it's business as usual. So that, that's about a nine-acre lot that has some possibilities. The problem is it was originally built for... Um, when Keynes was, you know, when Oxford was going full tilt, that was an additional warehousing. Mm -hmm. And there used to be trucks that used to make a daily pilgrimage out of Coates Avenue, down South Main, 116 or whatever. And then they added on. So it's sort of a pork chop building. I, I, I have a funny feeling sometimes it's got some limitations as to what you can do with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, someone would have to sort of reconfigure whatever. So that's, that's a possibility. Um, on Industrial Drive East, you've got uh, uh, Development Associates that control those buildings. They're outside of, they might periodically have a, uh, a floor or a part of a building that's up for, um, up for lease. Travis will call me. He'll tell me. He puts a sign out on Industrial Drive East that those are the boards that we have uh, that are out there on Industrial, Jeep, Industrial Drive East saying, you know, there's, there's space available. So can, um, I, can I clarify on the Roar sure. stuff? Uh, so they have that, uh, sure. looks sure. like they own that whole corner. So they have the big lot, the 19, which is a, a large section. So which is, which is we, we always call that lot 10. Yeah. The, big, the big one, yep. the L-shaped large one. And then, yeah. and then yeah. there's lot five. 10. Yep. Yep. And then there, there's a house there, the red one. That must be their house, right? And that's right on Well, no, no. That, all right. That, okay, as a way of history, when... Jack Chesla, Ed Crafts, and all some good people who are no longer with us. When they were developing all this land, they needed as much. When, when Jack was literally traveling up and down the East Coast, to Philly, to Boston, to New York, to try and get industrial revenue bonds and everything, they needed a certain amount of acreage. Mm -hmm. So Marjorie Roars uh, owned that house that's there. That house was included in the acreage. However, we, it, she was never, there was an agreement that she, you know, it's, a, it's really a small parcel. I mean, right. it's kittens. Yeah. Um, so that was included to get, to get the acreage so Jack could get the money to get the, the federal and state money that built that park. Mm -hmm. And um, so what happened was uh, David and Sharon somehow had this conversation with the two gentlemen from Worthington Assembly and they went back and forth, back and forth. Um, Peter James represented uh, David and Sharon, and the council out of Springfield represented uh, the Worthing Assembly folks. And uh, working with Felicity, there was only so much we could give up because we cannot break the protective covenants of, of the park. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we also, but Felicity, there was some, there was some room that we could, we could do things because we, we just felt it, in our good stead that we, we knew time was what, of the essence was sharing with our health. So um, uh, we, didn't, we didn't give up you know, any, any uh, requirements you know, uh, of the park, but at the same time we allowed the sale to go through. So, and so it, fortunately it went through, 
There's two other. There's two other. So there's the red house, and then there's uh, like a, a, a maybe a half acre or something, and then there, there's like a quarter acre. Yeah, there's sliver. there. Yeah, those are those, yeah, those are little small things. That yes. that was part of Marjorie's uh, property. Yeah. But that's now all becoming. And, and Rick, actually, at the uh, one of the earlier meetings this year, mm -hmm. we're we're trying to discover how the assessors uh, how that's going to be um, looked upon as to. Um, you know how that's going to get with the real so estate. So that whole but large square will be now one piece of property, correct? One one piece, one piece. Of, yes, one piece and the of house property. Is, the house will um, stay still there. Yeah. Okay. The house will the house will stay. The house will stay. Yeah. It's part of the mix. Yeah. But the, the 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 good thing about it is now Worthington Assembly is now paying us because lot ten never generated any money because mm -hmm. basically each lot shares the the total expenses of the park. Right. Okay, and obviously Atlantic Furniture, well, Millis Falls Tool, where I worked for mm -hmm. about three years, uh, they're 30, 30, uh, let's say 30, 30 acres just between, you know, yeah. just to round things up. Yeah. Uh, they're, the, they're the biggest, they're the biggest uh, payer. Mm -hmm. And um, so now Lot 10, even though it's a small parcel, now it's contributing towards the reimbursement of our expenses. And all that expenses just goes in, and then we just reconstitute and say, okay, what do we need to do? Do we need to do this? For an improvement and what have you. So, uh, it, we really we don't have we don't have any more land, you know, to develop. I mean, the the whole thing, you know, basically outside of Lot Ten for all these years, everything that Jack and Chick and Helen and everyone else, you know, everything sold, everything right. everything developed, yeah. and uh, you see what you have today, and um, you know. So, uh, now, as I mentioned, Jeff, go ahead. Now go ahead. that they own that whole square, would they, would they, and you, you talked about them putting a, a building on there, maybe manufacturing, at least on that lot 10, which yes. is now that whole square, including the yes. house and the other two little lots. Okay. Yes. Got, yep. Just to clarify. Yes. And what they, and, and what they will do is they will come in through uh, industrial drive east. Yep. That, that see, that was right the whole, pro that that, see, see, that, that was the whole problem with that, with that lot, that that lot there because the only way you could access lot 10 was through an easement on, on the end of industrial drive east right so now they want to come and entertain to us um that they'll just extend industrial drive east and and reconfigure the thing so yeah, yeah. It, it, it the property's been reconfigured you know they they understand that we are going to require each year and we'll probably go about a couple years in understanding now that covid has really sort of put a wrench in a lot of plans or whatever but we're hoping in the next couple of years that we'll see something developed for the yeah. you know like i say to develop and build their um uh their industry their business out yeah. of where they're leasing now over into uh you know onto their own property okay and uh so that's that's been a negotiation and like i say we're glad we were able to get it done so you know uh you know david and sharon we're, we're, we're clear of that. That, that was yeah. a good thing okay. to do. Um, is there a time frame and for that? Where, Paul, is there a time frame? That? Is there a time frame for that development to happen? Isn't it there a time frame? Uh, they, they have, yeah, yeah. They, they have to come to us every year in the beginning of December. Uh, and they, pro they basically will go out two years. And then uh, we have to make a decision as to, because you have to understand when the park was built, and I could, the bylaws I have with me. The whole purpose back in the mid-70s when the economy was in the tank around here, the whole purpose with an edict, of which Deerfield was the first edict blessed by the state legislature, um, and Wendy can back me up on that one. Um, the, whole, the whole purpose was, okay, fine, we're going to sell you this parcel of land, you know, you're going to pay us so much, but within, I think, I, I don't have the I, I have to dig through the bylaws, but basically there's a very short leash, a year to two years. You had to either develop, start building, and you know have a, a business up and running. Otherwise, uh, the way Nick Filler, lawyer who crafted this whole thing, the protective covenants for the park, uh, Dita had the right to basically buy get get the land back and then start the process all over, find a buyer that was going to develop, you know, build and, and, and do what they said. So, um, it, you know, obviously it paid off. Uh, as far as I know, talking, you know, and again, 
I, uh, you know, uh, with Jack and, and Ed and, and Helen, everyone that bought, went in and bought land, bought a parcel, you know, they, they bellied up and uh, they, they built their parcel and they, you know, developed their business and they employed and they paid taxes and so on and so forth. So um, what we do is we watch very carefully uh, for, you know, and, and this is where we, we try to maintain a constant uh, contact with all the, all the park, pro, park property owners, both on the West Drive and the East Drive, you know, if they're selling or, or whatever. Um, with the East Drive, with uh, Development Associates, we really, you know, Travis Ward, who I've built up a good relationship with, he'll call me, uh, be it potholes in Industrial Drive East or whatever he says, I got, you know, I got a building and I'm, you know, I got a floor that's uh, empty. Uh, you know, you know anybody? Uh, and not to be a conflict of interest with my, you know, my 38 years in banking, uh, where I am now, uh, you know, uh, I can put feelers out and maybe sort of point in the direction where maybe, you know, there might be some interest or, you know, what they can do. So, um, it's, it's, it, 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 it's economic development, but at the same time, it's like a it's like a it's like a grown child, and we're we're just making sure it, it stays on the straight and narrow. Um, it's uh, you know that's that's the, what we were charged. We follow, you know, we have rules and regulations, we have bylaws, we have protective covenants. Um, uh, I don't know. It, it's been working very well. I know that with the. I hope I'm saying this correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Calvestro mm -hmm. company right across the uh, town line, uh, we appointed Ralph Healy, who, uh, you know, from our board standpoint, Ralph is a former retired business owner. He serves as our clerk who is very, you know, adept in things. We appointed him as the representative for the town, or not for the town, excuse me, for Dita, in the conversations with Calvestro, you know, where, where that was all going, and I know things have sort of slow down for the moment. Um, we have Rick Andrioli, who uh, is our, our financial uh, our, our, uh, you know, our financial person and uh, treasurer, I should say, and uh, very versed in his background, his years, uh, in, in, in that stead. So uh, that's been good. And um, like I say, I, I just, it, it's been good. The one thing I will say, and I, and I, and I talked to Trevor about this, and uh, I entertain this. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, we, uh, we we have an open. We have you know with the way the edict was formed. There were seven um, seven numbers, and there used to be the old school. You had to have a person of in real estate. You had to per, have to have a person in banking and, and so on and so forth. Well, uh, uh, lower income, you know, moderate income. Uh, working with Wendy when she was here. The, a lot of that stuff with the Department of Housing Community Development has gone out the, out the door, that, those requirements. However, we do have an opening, and as I said to Trevor, we would welcome uh, having uh, someone come on, because we did have someone to, for, for about a year that was, excuse me, that was appointed, and a uh, young kid, and had a lot of energy, and we enjoyed having him. And then he left to go pursue his further education, I believe, at Newtown in New York City, and uh, so, uh, you know, it's out there. We, you know, we would welcome, uh, you know, outside of the reappointment, but also if there was someone that wanted to uh, join the board. Um, and uh, it, it's not so much the economic development. We have no other tracks to sell, I mean, or th that are available. I mean, uh, it's more cultivating, maintaining the park. Um, I will say Mark Ballone has done uh, you know, a great job cleaning stuff up. You know, we've had our back and forth with him, uh, and, and so on. Um, but I, I think we're in a good place at the moment. And, um, I, uh, Jeff Goulet has had his, has had his, um, dreams of what he wanted to do with, uh, my cousin used to run, uh, and Northampton Boston Express, uh, trucking firm out of there. And I know Jeff wanted to tear down all the trucking terminals and create a facility that he could literally drive the trucks in and put them undercover and, and do maintenance and whatever. 
So, you know, I don't know where that stands. Uh, you know, we've been back and forth on that. But, you know, the, the biggest thing is in the, mid, in the mid-70s, this thing was created, uh, and, I'm, and I'm here again, I'm not trying to belabor the point, but when Miller's Falls Tool and Gasol Ram threatened to move out of the county, taking with it about 1,000 jobs, we, you know, the park was created. And uh, that's why, you know, the cornerstone for the park has always been the 30 acres of that uh, five and a half uh, uh, acre covered building. So, anyways, getting back to what we're talking about here with reappointments, um, uh, things things are going well. I, you know, like I say, I I I, I look to the rest of the board uh, for their expertise and whatever. Um, they were all, and I, you know, like I say, we 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 really feel good about how we helped get lot 10 now instead of just a, a piece of land sitting there not contributing hopefully in the next year to two years we'll be you know employing uh paying taxes uh real estate taxes and the like and uh helping this thing move on what was so, um what was Cavestro interested sure. in what 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 was their question i, I well you 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 I, I don't mean to sound flip here. You tell me. All I know is there's something about, you know, using our uh, the deeded piece of land that it's sort of as a buffer between the industrial uh, between me, the cul-de-sac and the town line about uh, attaching sewer water. I don't know, uh, and that's why we appointed so, Ralph Healy to represent. And this is this is back when Diana was uh, as mm-hmm. town administrator. So yeah. we we appointed. We appointed Ralph, and we've heard nothing. So, you know, uh, he's still waiting to hear, and he would represent, and, uh, you know, in, in what, what the, the folks at Kilvestro have to say, you know, what their, their thoughts are, what they want to do. You know, like I say, there's always been the desire, either a water line or a sewer line. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the, line, uh, the, the line that goes into the sewer line, those two lines go under the industrial park. You're aware of that, correct? Yes. Yeah. And they truncate. They truncate down in the valley, just behind on industrial vibes. And they are. We have all the plans. We have all the maps, uh, and they are 24 inch. So, anyway. Okay. The pipes are 24. Sorry, you mentioned that. that. The, the pipes are they 24. Are, they are 24. Okay. They're 24. Yes. If you when they we we have all all the all the uh, all the all the all the maps. I okay. mean, all the maps. Yep. All the design plans. I mean, going from a storm grate all the way to how they laid out the Ingersoll Rand plant and what have you. So, mm-hmm. and also the swale and the and the retention pond. So, um, but yes, those are 24 inch pipes that truncate. They the two pipes meet, and then they, like I say, they form the single line in back of uh, sort of what I I call down in the valley there and back on the industrial drivees. Yeah, and uh, then they shoot right out. Then then they then they sh- a direct line, one line shoots right out to the uh, to the sewage treatment plant. So, okay. Anyways, so that's where that's where I that's where I stand. Um, like I say, we've got we've got a number of things going on. We got a, our fiscal year ends July, uh, June thirtieth. Uh, we have to select. Uh, uh, we'll probably uh, continue with it with the accounting firm that we have been. Um, you folks, and also we have to report by uh, by law, by Mass General Law, we have to report annually to the uh, to the Department of Housing and Community Development. I could be wrong. This seems to change a little bit, but um, with an annual report and financial statements, which we do, we reconstituted for sure mm-hmm. in uh, 2013, and. Um, so, uh, you know, and then also, just in, in, in here again, Trevor, I might be going down the same path, and I apologize for that. You know, in, in 2015, um, we had an economic development plan that was built, that was created back in 1976, 77, for the park as it stood. Um, and we decided, and Casey can uh, chime in on this, but... She was instrumental in writing a grant application that we got a $10,000 grant. The COG helped us to develop, to update our economic development plan. And we did go back and forth on, 
okay, do we just concentrate on the 80 some odd acres of the park? Do we, do we expand out into the town? And it was decided after a number of meetings that we would just focus on, uh, uh, on the park. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we did. The one thing I will say, uh, when edicts were formed back in the mid-70s, they legally were just for manufacturing and industrial. Now, is there commercial development in the park? Yes. Are you going to turn away employment? Are you going to turn away taxes and all the like? Of course not. So what we did when we updated the FM development plan, we uh, sought the, um, the, the assistance of, um, it, now I remember it. Uh, remember the other day, uh, Trevor, I couldn't think of it. Yep. Stan Rosenberg. Oh, yes. Yep. And Representative Kulik. Yes, now I remember it. Yep. Two days ago, I couldn't remember it for the <laughs> life of me. But anyways, um, Stan, who at the time was Senate president, uh, they put a bill into the leg state legislature, and we, uh, Charlie Baker, signed it uh, literally almost on the last day in January of 2017. Uh, and it took a while. It's as, you know, as anything goes in government, you sort of go to snail's pace. Um, the, the Deerfield Industrial Park, DEDA, we legally have the right to have commercial development in the park. Technically, if you look at all the edicts that were written back then, it was only for manufacturing and industrial. We now, based on the order, uh, the, you know, the legislate, legislative action by, uh, that was done and the governor signed it, we can have commercial development. So I, me being an auditor in, in, in my background, I, I just wanted that really sort of tied up and, you know, we didn't ever had to worry about that, um, you know, for whoever down the road. So that's done. And, uh, but, you know, the one thing we, you know, and, and, and I'm speaking, I'm speaking for the whole board. We would like to be, you know, uh, like to be involved in, you know, in, you know, if anything, our expertise, you know, we have a diverse board. Uh, and I would just like to, you know, entertain, you know, what we can provide. I, be it small, you know, medium or large, any, any kind of information, uh, you know, as this town, you know. And, and unfortunately, because our economic development plan limits us to, um, uh, you know, the park, uh, you know, in terms of what our authorities are or whatever, uh, you know, we're limited. I mean, that would require a whole other economic development plan process and uh, expand where we would want um, to be able to, uh, uh, you know, provide our assistance, you know, legally, obviously, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and go from there. So, uh, like I say, I would welcome the addition of another member. Uh, it's there. Uh, I don't know. I'm just looking for the acceptance of the three of us and uh, continue um, and uh, move forward. But again, like I say, whoever you were thinking of wanting to, to place on the board, uh, we'd be more than, a, uh, you know, uh, to hear what, you know, the thoughts you have. So I think I've rambled on enough. That was good info. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, yep. Okay. Right. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments or? No. No. Thank you, Paul. Though you answered a lot of questions I had actually. Yep. And the one thing, Carolyn, not to to get off the get off the uh, ranch here, but you know, me being on the 350th committee, um, that possibly could be a, a, you know, and here again, depending on where the parade, you know, and again, we're, we're obviously a little bit far out. The park does have space. I, I'm thinking from a logistics standpoint, from a staging area or whatever, it provides possibility in space. Yeah. So, we actually, I'm that's, just, our, I'm just, that's our 10,000 person plus um, emergency dispensing site. Um, right. Out. If yeah, you right, and that also yep. we worked right, and we also worked with the fire department. And the thing is, we did uh, the cul-de-sac on Industrial Drive West, and we had several meetings with the fire department. That's an alternative site for Life Flight. Yeah. Uh, 
but the board decided we weren't going to get into, uh, you know, putting the big H, you know, on, on the cul-de-sac or any of that stuff, because then you get in with the FAA and you get into a, a lot of bureaucracy. So the one thing I do and, and the group does is we monitor, you know, activities in the park and we make sure that there is no long, you know, there's no parking in the cul-de-sac. You know, God forbid there's an event where the, you know, life flight would have to land because it is a perfect spot to land. And yeah. it is free and clear of utility lines, free and clear of everything. Well, you know, just, and it's I got just, perfect access. I just want you to know that I'm so, so happy that Atlantic Furniture cleaned it up because it's a lot nicer to set up our EDS. Right, um, right. If we right. have to I mean, spring, you know, Mark, 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 Mark's, a, Mark's a tough customer. I, don't get me wrong. But what, what I worked in, when I worked in there from 79 to 82, uh, was one thing. What he's done to clean the place up, uh, you know, people have come up to us, you know, and I'm sure obviously come up to you guys and said the same thing. Uh, you know, it looks better driving down 116 than it used to. It looks no amazing. Question. Yeah, very professional. Be because, because, because under, understand, uh, we, Edict, we have, we have, and, and it's a slippery slope, uh, as, as you obviously guys are aware, we have the power for eminent take back by eminent domain and before mark bought this it was owned by a group a consortium of uh real estate developers investors down in west palm beach and we were about a year away from considering what our next action should be because our concern was safety you know the structural integrity of, of the building and uh but again that's a slippery slope to, to go down mm -hmm. to and we were advised by council you know that we really should try to stay away from that and then you know they had another auction this group down in west palm beach had another online auction and um uh you know mark purchased it and i know yankee candle made made inroads with it and and decided to back off uh you know they they backed away from uh they're they're looking at it so mm -hmm. uh but it, but yes at the end of the day there's been a lot of improvements it really almost looks like when it opened up in the mid '70s. It's a beautiful, it, it, it beautiful does. looking it, building. It's really, it's really cleaned up. Yeah, looks great. Yeah, nice professional, mm -hmm. nice signage. It does. Very good. It does. No question. So, anyways. Thank you, Paul. All right, I think I've talked. I think I've talked too much, but anyways. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank Ho you. Hopefully, I provided insight. Yep. Okay. You did. Thank All right. you. All right. Um, any other, any other questions? We we'll move on. What do you? No, no, I have no questions. Um, on this, what, why, why, what are we going to do with this George? I mean, uh, George Floyd letter. Well, I would like. I was going to take some uh, questions. I think uh, there was going to be a, a member that wanted to call in, or the public wanted to talk oh, about that. Okay. I wanted to address this. You know, we we really, we haven't had well, a chance to meet and address this issue um, yet. And I think, you know, we had town meeting and it's really not our meeting. It's, it's um, yeah. so it, like you can't just jump up and say something. Yeah. Um, but I, um, I wanted to, I would like to read the letter into. Oh. Um, is it, pardon me, yeah. is this part of DDIC or are we? No, are we oh, no, done we're all done. We're done. We're done on DDIC at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. All right. So, well, uh, will, there be a, will there be a vote tonight on reappointments? I just need to know ahead of time for my annual meeting tomorrow. That's what I'm just asking. I'm hearing a no at the moment. A no? A no at the moment. But that may change later in the meeting. For reappointment. We're not doing. For we're reappointment for all three of us. Correct. Reappointment for all three of us. Correct. But that that doesn't okay. mean we won't take a vote a little later. Okay. Understood. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So I wanted to read the, um, this letter because this, this letter was um, crafted through, you know, a couple different avenues, and, and um, Darius and, and uh, the crew, you know, were their administration, and, and I think a teacher had put, had put together some information and wanted to kind of get a statement out. We, we've been wanting to talk about this as well. Um, but I just want to read this letter into the record because um, we have it in the meeting in the minutes, but I think it's, um, it's well written. So uh, the towns of Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley um, 
write to you today, we write to you today from a place of shared grief and pain over the tragic death of George, uh, Mr. George Floyd, pain over the tragic events that has transpired in Minneapolis and the many cities and towns across our nation, pain over this sen senseless tragedy as we turn our collective attention to the perpetual problem of racial inequalities being amplified by incidences of senseless police brutality in America. We recognize many members of our community are grieving and we um, offer solace to you all. First, as public safety officials, we want to assure you that we will focus on how we can deliver on the promise of effective and fair public safety protection. As always, we strive to remain ever thoughtful in our work and ensure that all members of our community feel safe, protected, listened to, and served by all members of our public safety departments. Second, our school district continues to commit uh, to our shared values that diversity is a strength and an asset every individual has equal human value, and that a secure and safe environment and peaceful conflict resolution are essential to learning and to society. We will continue to build social justice training for our staff as we conduct, uh, as we connect with our students, discuss real world problems and, and multiple perspectives, and create classroom communities. Third, our community leaders will determine the best ways for us to engage on this important mission as we continue to move forward. We feel a deep sense of responsibility and recognize that we must be allies to stand alongside together and we stand alongside you. Finally, for all of us as public officials, this tragedy makes us reflect on our own practices, behavior and attitudes. We ask ourselves whether we are doing enough, are vigilant enough, and whether we have fostered a true culture of respect and honesty. We will try to do this through training listening and learning, and maintaining an attitude of humility and service. We also feel deeply that to see injustices and to say nothing is to condone them. When things are unjust, we believe it is our role to speak out. We have been living in an extremely stressful time, and yet since mid-March, we, uh, we have saved lives in this pandemic. We have isolated ourselves, change the way we live, and sacrifice to safeguard the well-being of our most valued, our most valuable among us, and as we prevent our hospitals from becoming overwhelmed. It is, it is vital to remember that we have been uh, united in easing suffering, improving lives, and improving and providing hope during a turbulent and challenging period in, of our history. These actions throughout this crisis lead us to believe we are capable, all of us, of creating an America we must insist belongs to us all. And the quote from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar says, racism in America is like dust in the air. It seems invisible, even if you're choking on it until you let the sun in, and then you see it everywhere. So um, I've been having some just private conversations personally with, with different people, and uh, I've been trying to figure a way you know, in this time of COVID to start um, listening um, to persons of color and to see, um, to listen to see how people feel in this community and where we can do a better job of um, listening to them and making changes or getting better understanding of their, their needs or, or how they feel safe or unsafe in our community. Um, there was one post I read that really, you know, broke my heart that, that somebody was concerned and didn't, their son did not feel safe just running in our community. And that really is, um, it's horrible. Uh, just, it's shocking and, and horrible. And, you know, and if you don't uh, speak to it and address it and sit down and, and really learn from people and understand the experiences they're having, um, you know, if you, if you ignore it and, you know, if it's not happening to you, it's not happening, it's not the right answer. Um, what I need to understand and listen better and find ways that we can um, work together to, to improve people's experience so they do, and every person feels safe no matter what. Um, I know that there's a vigil this weekend, Saturday, for, I think from 12 to 2, um, uh, for Black Lives Matter in Deerfield, and um, I'd love to take a part in that and um, be there to listen and understand. And I, again, I've reached out to other people a lot, I've gotten a lot of letters to um, where people want to get involved and I want to be involved with them and I'm, I'm trying to 
I, I, I'm really, I want this led by, um, by those, not so much me, but I want to attend that and give them help that I can help, but I, it really, you know, it comes from listening to them um, and not from me dictating what needs to change. I, I need to hear first what, what actions we could take. And, you know, I've talked a lot with our chief police who's very, um, very moved by this as well and is, you know, is looking at ways that he can, he can, I know he's talking with a lot of members of the public too and, you know, kind of reaffirming that we, you know, we don't use chokeholds and these, these kind of other, other issues. And, and we really want to find out um, what more we can do, what more we can set up in our schools for professional development when we develop, you know, there's a lot of social justice. Ever since I've gotten on the school committee, we've been looking at bringing social justice to, through education um, to, to professional development, working through the uh, collaborative. Um, I know that I, I've seen a lot of the stuff that has happened through our elementary school. And, and then there's different community um, groups that have gotten together, the Deerfield um, Inclusion Group, which has looked at ways I was just going to say the DIG group. The DIG group excellent. is awesome. Yep. You know, uh, Lou Vincent and, and, and Rich, they've all been, you know, and others have been pulling together um, yeah. information and doing movie nights and kind of trying to, um, trying to bring light to this issue, whether it's transgender or, or race or, you know, sexual identity, whatever it might be, um, that, that they are welcome here. Children are welcome here, and, and um, we want people to feel safe. So I'm, I'm looking to learn from people, and I hope to hear this weekend, um, and as I've reached out to other members, they, they said that they will get back to me when they kind of have a, have a list together and have a forum and I you know I welcome to do that any way we can safely um, you know I worry about the spike in COVID as all the protests that are happening which are, are right to do but um, it just please protect yourself wear a mask wash use hand sanitizer um, constantly wear a mask and and try not to stand next to somebody that doesn't have a mask on because um, we're seeing spikes you know since Labor Day um, in the cases, not particularly in Deerfield yet, but around Memorial the country. Uh, excuse me, it's Memorial Day, since Memorial <laughs> Day. Day. I'm rushing the year, it's crazy. Um, so I'm not sure what else to speak on the issue, but I, but I just wanted people to know that I'm, I'm fully aware and um, want to participate and I want it to be led by persons of color to listen to them and understand how, how we can address their needs. And I know that Darius is doing the same exact thing and Chief is meeting with, with people and so, um, I think we'll have more on the subject as it, as it unfolds and as we have a venue set up for safe, you know, list. No, normally we would say, fill this place, let's talk. And, um, and, but you can't right now, so we've got to find a safe way to do that. And um, I'm looking forward to a way to do that, that we can do it either remotely or outside or, you know, um, I'm curious yeah. what comes out of this weekend too, if we can. Yeah. Find I, different I, ways. Um, I agree with you, and and I know I have been supportive of the DIG group, um, the diversity group, mm -hmm. and I know they've been really trying very hard to have, make it feel safe to have conversations about mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and part of it, people are, you know, there's just so much going on all the time, and so maybe this is a good time to talk about this stuff. It is and, a good time, and, it definitely and is. Even though it's inconvenient not to be able to get together, um, that doesn't mean we can't, like you we said, listen and then try to be, um, figure out a way to move, move forward cooperatively. Mm -hmm. and well, as I said to others that had reached out to me, we, we, uh, what moved me a lot was this, this uh, winter when I went to the MMA a municipal well, we, um, yes, we vulnerability. Both. We yeah. really like that guy. Yes, in, in the C, uh, League of Cities is a group that deals with this, um, with racism. And he, he gave a, an amazing, um, you know, presentation on, you know, on redlining, what that meant, people coming back from the war, wh why certain land values were, you know, more valuable than others and where people were segregated. And it's just, um, if you look back at the history, it's just heart wrenching and even really unfathomable to think about. Um, but, but is in fact true and happens and still can happen. So um, I, I just, there were, there were different communities that were working with the League of Cities to kind of recognize their history and how to, how to make change and how to, be, how to positively affect, you know, making sure everyone had 
equal opportunities and um, I think it was Lexington. I could be wrong on the no, it town. No, Lexington. Um, it had invited invited them in just to kind of do a seminar and, and, and training. And I think that's something that we, you know, I, I'm very um, excited about trying to think of think of how we could how we could do that. So, but I, I, again, I want to hear from others and and listen. Uh, I don't want to just dictate what what I think needs to change or needs to happen. I want to hear from others. So. And, and collectively all together can move forward. So I'm excited to do that. You know, I look at this as, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody on this. But if you don't have action, the thoughts and prayers don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You've got to have action. We've had too many. Uh, and, you know, I have to condemn uh, the officers that in what happened. I was an officer in this town for 14 years. I'm very proud of my service. Um, I'm very proud of our current chief of police mm -hmm. and the way he handles this department. Yep. Yes. Uh, and one iota of any type of racism or mistreatment of individuals would not be tolerated mm -hmm. in this town. And, you know, this is the way it should be. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's a shame that we have, you know, some bad cops in the system. It's, mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's like everything else. You know? Yep. Even with boards of selectmen, sometimes you have a bad selectmen. Yep. You, you can. You know, it's, it, it happens because, of, you know, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. And if nobody corrects the behavior of the individuals, they'll never get corrected. Yeah, and you have to be open to that change and open yeah. to that recognition that you are wrong sometimes. Yeah. You're not always right, and you need to think yeah. differently and, and change. Me that all the time. <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. One of, the, one of the things I just want to say um, and, and bring up, uh, just or reiterate what Dave says about our police department and our police chief, is that we really do have one of the most up-to-date, comprehensive use of force um, policies in the entire state and and I would put it up against any any policy in the country actually so I feel like you know we we, we tr are making every effort to be proactive years ago um, I mean the whole reason we did hire John was because we needed to have our policies updated mm -hmm. and to be current and you know again going to the MMA um, have going to the workshops about what was current and seeing that you know some of our policies were from the 70s is you know was was like really worrisome i mean it's mm -hmm. a huge it's it's awful but it's also a liability issue and so that was one of the things that was the first when john was first hired was this is your priority and and yeah. the board of selectmen have always supported community policing. We believe in, in community policing, which is you are policing your neighbors. Mm -hmm. This is a neighbor's kind of attitude, not a military mm -hmm. operation. So I'm, I'm, I am proud of our police department. And as Dave says, it's, it, it is an attitude thing. And, and we're not, we would never ever support anything that was not appropriate. Yeah, so I'm anxious to learn, you know, yeah. from what people and see what they think. And um, I wanted yeah. to open up to public comment. Is anybody um, is anybody on the line wish to speak to the issue? And if you do, you unmute yourself by star six. Hi, Trevor. It's Kate. Hi, Kate. Kate Hart. Hi, Kate. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank hello, you. everybody. Thank you. And hello, hello thank Carolyn. You. Thank you for your email. And... Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just say a couple things. Please Thank you do. so much Please for the do. opportunity to You're most welcome. speak to you. And um, I just want to say that I'm really happy to be a relatively new resident of Deerfield. We've been here for two years, and we moved here because of the beauty of the friendliness and the safety. That was how it appeared to us, and um, it has Deerfield has so far really met our expectations. Um, and in the last week, I have um, 
joined in with hundreds of thousands of American citizens in shock and um, dismay and saying enough to um, systemic racism. Um, and so the reason why I'm reaching out to the select board and speaking right now is because um, I'm just wanting to take a look at the question of, okay, so so far I'm feeling like this is a safe town, but I have white skin. Right. And how does that feel to people of color to be right. here? Yep. Um, so it's a question I'm just wanting to put out. And I really do appreciate um, the extensive policy that our chief created. And um, it, I did look it over. Thank you for sending it to me, Carolyn. Um, it's very long and it's legal. And it's not clear to me but from my immediate uh, reading of it that it would protect someone um, that would need it. But, you know, hopefully it would. So specifically, though, I have a question that I wanted to raise to to you, and that is, has the has the idea of body cameras for our police ever been addressed? And if not, could it be? Um, I don't know much about them myself, and I'm interested in learning. I do know that um, the town where we raised our children, Shootsbury. Um, they do use uh, their mandated body cameras for all police. And it is an issue that I've heard um, is quite important, and I, I really want to learn more. Mm. Yeah, um, I too would like so to I'll, learn more. I'll, I'll leave it at that, and I, I also want to say thank you to all of you who have created such a wonderful place. Um, we are so happy to be here, and um, so I, I look forward to contributing. Thank you. We're happy to have you, for sure. <laughs> Very happy you're here and, and happy you're stepping up to say a few words on this issue, too. Um, I don't know about it. In my four years, the body cam cameras have not come up uh, as an issue. I don't know. Um, it, I, I'd love I think to hear. you were on the board when we did. It, it has, Kate, it did come up a while ago, and I think it was it was enough years ago that we were still recovering from the financial crisis, 2000. I think it was, I don't want to say it was 2010, yeah. and it wasn't 2011 because that was a, we had our disaster filled year. Um, but, you know, Snowtober, Irene, Landslide, yeah. all that. So it wasn't that year. So it might have been 2012, but we really hadn't recovered. I mean, we had so many expenses from 2011. So it's either so, fiscal year, it would have been fiscal year um, 13, I think was when we were considering it, but we were still recovering. As, and, and the fiscal year starts in, part, in the part of the year before. So I think we were just getting out of the financial crisis. Then we had huge expenses from Irene and then, so we just, it was one of those things we just didn't do because we just didn't do, have the money. So I think, you know, I, I'd be interested in, in, and I'm sure John probably has researched it already and may, would probably could add, add some info to this and, and I could try to get more info back to you. Um, but I would be interested in looking at that. I, I'm sure, you know, when you look at body cams um, and we're 24-7 we're um, agency, so we're on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so it's a massive amount of data that, that and I don't know, I, I'm, I'm curious to understand, like how long do you keep the video, what kind of data storage you need? I mean, that's a massive amount of data, so you need a lot of space for it. And I'm sure, well, it's been solved everywhere else, so I'm sure we could figure it out. But I'm just, you know, I, that's something that we'd have to figure out budget-wise how much it is, you know, what it, what it's. I actually am really supportive of body cameras. Mm -hmm only because I think it protects our police officers. Absolutely. I yeah. feel well, like no, it's, it always is a he said, she said thing. And our, our officers, I have real good faith in, and, and I feel that the body cameras actually protect our officers and their actions. Mm -hmm. And so- And the public, yeah. And, well, uh, ultimately yeah. the public, but- Sure. That's why we've installed uh, cameras in the town hall 
and in the police, you know, there's cameras all around because, you know, we've had issues with being people being not civil. Mm -hmm. And um, by having the cameras, we've been able to record and eliminate um, the people that were not civil. So we yeah, can get, get some info on that. Go ahead. Dan. Just to let you know, the, uh, currently with the HEROES bill that's going through Congress, uh, they're talking about putting a rider on there, uh, and that rider would uh, mandate that all law enforcement officers in the United States would be required to have body cams and be funded by the federal government. Oh, that'd be nice. Oh, that would be nice. We'll yeah. Take that in a minute. Um, yeah. Then so I think I, we'll get more info on that. It's a great question, Kate, and um, we'll just we'll get more info. See what we can find out. I, I, um, Kate, I'm on the Capital Improvement Committee, and I I just can't remember the exact year, but it was, you know, it always comes down to whether we hadn't done any capital investment because of those bad years, and I think it was just one of those things that got dropped off because we had such a backlog of priorities. Mm -hmm. So we'll find out. We'll get more info. Okay. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, that would be great if the federal government would pay for them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Yeah. We really appreciate all your your dedication. Thank you. Are there any other comments on the line? Does anybody else wish to speak? I guess not. So we're. Um, we're down to the, con oh. Um. So, uh, let's see, I just wanted to hit on a cup. Just for Go a ahead. point of interest on this letter. Yes. Uh, one, they misspelled Casey's name. Yeah, and, and uh, they didn't add all of our names. And, and my name's not on there. And Carolyn's not either, right? Carolyn. No, I am oh, on there. Oh, you did make it on there. Okay, yeah. so yeah, we'd love to maybe re redo that and add our names, and we can certainly put something out on our letterhead as well. To do that because yeah think, yeah i know you support it as well it's not david a, i know yeah and I think but if you everybody. notice there is only one select board person from conway right and um, i don't know they all yeah and there was only there was two from waitley so there was one missing in waitley as well this says two yeah from yeah Three so we'll make seven. sure we get them all all listed on there so do you all want to be listed on the letter absolutely i mean um, well speak well, for me okay. i will but, let darius know okay Dave, do you you it's a, you want to be right? Yeah. 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 No, for some reason they forgot Dave. Okay. And yep. they got this odd Casey somebody. So yeah, and they Thank spelled you. your name wrong, Casey. Fix your name. They always spell my name wrong. Yeah, I've given up. <laughs> yeah, you're Casey at the back. I've I, been told we need to. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. The um, the umpire says I'm dragging this meeting out too long, but this was an important topic, and I know we've had most yeah. of oh, no, to do. Yeah. Oh no, it's fine, gonna, Trevor. We, well, we only have so many minutes, and then it shuts off. Oh really? Yes. What time? What's our <laughs> yeah. shut off? We have 180 minutes, and we've been rolling for a good. I don't know, quite a few. You're almost at two hours now. We're almost at two hours. Oh, so man. let's. Uh, okay. We we should have booked two meetings. <laughs> I know. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. We didn't think about that. Okay. Yep. Um, so. Uh, I just want a, a couple of things to start with um, as we get into COVID and we need to, um, I just really wanted to take this moment to thank um, a DA student, um, just because I have the floor here, I wanna do that. Um, Stephen Cooley, um, I knew his dad, I worked with his dad in construction and um, his son got into DA and uh, his son reached out to me um, about a month ago and, and when COVID was hitting and wanted to help the community and, and said, look, I've got a 3D printer and I can print face shields. And um, so, for, you know, for election workers and, and town meeting and, and that kind of thing. So um, I said, we'd love it, you know, and, and I think on our EDS drill, I reached out to the other members and uh, we, we were, and so in, in took him a few weeks, but he printed off like 150 or these shields, 125, 150 shields, um, and then delivered them to me and then I, brought them over in time for Sunderland's election and town meeting. And I think Conway's looking for some and have them over here and Waitley too. So I just wanted to thank Deerfield Academy because they let Stephen take from the innovation lab, take home um, two other 3D printers to join with his and a lot, all the material. And that was all donation of his time and DA to um, in the innovation lab to help 
you know, help our community um, at this time. That's I just huge, can't thank huge. them enough for instilling that you know, in, in their students of um, public outreach and, and, and helping it. When, time need. And also, we were not able to get adequate right. PPE you at get the time. It. So, so it, was, it was wonderful. Yep. So I wanted to thank him uh, personally. And we uh, have a letter uh, Jen helped me write. And um, we sent that to John Austin, the head of school, and Keith Finan, and, and, and of course, to uh, Stephen Cooley. So pretty proud of him for that. And DA's um, DA's been wonderful to help us and their their whole community um, getting PPE. So, do you want to um, to hit on uh, reopening at the moment? Well, we're working on reopening plans. Yep. Um, so we do need to designate um, uh, Dick to be able to approve the plans without us as a board of health actually meeting, meeting to approve them. Well, if, um, Casey, can you help me with this? It was going to be, uh, is this only liquor license that would be Board of Health, uh, you, Chief no, of Police? No, this would be Board of Health plan. No, no, so no. plans that the Board of Health has to approve. Okay. It's sort of, it's, it's one of those intersections. So so what it is, is, is Casey and John and... And Bob. That's the liquor license. That's the liquor thing. license. That's this right. They're gonna, this is board, they're, just general board of health plan. Right. But Dick would be the one that would sign off. Like he's he's uh, went to Deerfield Inn and approved the outdoor mm -hmm. um, dining at Deerfield Inn and, and, and verified that met all the compliance and stuff. So what we're doing is officially allowing him to approve these plans. Are we going to have any in, in, input into these? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because like I don't want just one person making the decision no, for... I know. I mean, he, although he's he is gonna, our There's going to be agent, conversation, but, but we can't always meet. Mm -hmm. And so this is... Like, he's, he's, doing, he's doing the library plan. Mm -hmm. And then he'll run it by us, even though he's, he has the authority. I mean, he, he's going to write it and then approve it. But he'll run it by us first. And anything that... You know, we'll have the opportunity, but we don't have to officially get together and, and vote it positive. He can sign off on it, is, 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 I guess is the best way to say it. Is that right, Casey? Is that what you guys are looking for in the office? Well, I'm looking. The thing is, is if we have to do, you guys would be doing a lot of meetings. He's yep. your board of health agent, and he is on boots on the ground doing this every day. Mm -hmm. So I think we do confer as a group. Um, but we don't have to. So have I do official... think it's a good idea to ha for him to have the authority to do some of that. But I certainly would be concerned if he wasn't communicating. Well, that's the thing. So I just want to. I think it's a good I, idea. It's just it's up to the board of health. I just want to have some in input into when we open and where we open and who's opening and what that oh, plan absolutely. looks like because I don't want just no, one either, person let me, making that let decision. Let me let me define this a little bit better. Yes. The the town opening is different. I'm talking. The reason I asked is. I'm talking about plans that he's coordinating with businesses. Right. And because there's like, businesses that have to report to the state, but the boards of health also have to look at these plans. And you guys, in order to decide something as a board of health, need to meet. Mm -hmm. So it means you either delegate him to handle the board of health plans or you, you commit to meeting very often. So what he's going to do is he'll run everything by us. But we don't actually have to officially meet to approve. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we're... The town reopening so. plan is completely different. No, I'm talking uh, about, you know, bars and, you know, uh, restaurants and that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that's what he would be doing. And I, I, my concern is not having any input in that. That's so. an element. The thing about it, Trevor, is... Are you willing to meet? And, and keep in mind, we have to do 48-hour postings. This mm -hmm. is why it came up with li liquor licenses. Well, because the state is asking people to facilitate things. Mm -hmm. And I believe, Carolyn, you can correct me, but I believe if the Board of Health delegates authority, it means that the agent can act more expeditiously. Right. But in most, in, in most of the towns that I'm, I'm aware of, What's happening is that they're, they're designating someone, either one member of the Board of Health, if they don't have an agent, yeah. or the Board of Health agent, to sign off on them. But everybody right. is having input on everything. But that way, Dick can talk to you, 
You can talk to me. You can well, talk to just, Dave. Yeah, I just and, would like that input before yeah. all of a sudden, you know, these are just open and open and signed off on without yeah. any input from, from the Board of Health. Yeah, no, uh, Dick will just do what he's doing now is to make sure he, I mean, he, he talks to us all the time. He does, yeah, yeah. he's been very, very attentive during yeah. this whole time, for sure. Um, so if you, but if you're comfortable, we can set up some kind of procedure so that he can run everything by. I would like some input on, okay. on what, when different businesses are, I mean, we haven't really met, I mean, it's been two months, three months now, and, you know, we've had time to kind of discuss how this would go, but we've been dealing with town meeting and all the other mess. Um, so, um, Well, the I'm other really thing to keep to get... in mind is we're subject to the regulations. Those interpretations, I don't know if you've noticed your emails, when I get interpretive information from council, I pass it along to you. That's the information we use to give you an indication of how the Board of Health and the Select Board should be proceeding. So we're communicating those things. And I am on... Well, what we're saying is, is the state's actually told us we need to expedite some of this. Mm -hmm. So the only way to do that without posting, without posting a meeting every 48 hours is right. to have a Board of Health agent or another designee be able to handle it. Okay. I'm well, according I'm okay. to those guidelines. I'm okay with that. I just want to make you know, sure we that check we're... in about that stuff. Yeah, I want to make sure we're on. What on... also happens amongst ourselves? What What also happens is Dick and I are on three DPH calls a week, mm -hmm. and what happens is during those calls, they, um, you know, answer questions on the t interpretation. So we have the latest up to date interpretation too. So. Okay. But what we can do is, is um, Dick can organize some kind of protocol that he runs everything by us, um, like the library plan. We'll, right. we'll completely know what the library plan is before they're allowed to open next week. And, okay. and then we can have, because I've already had, you know, one of the things that Candace was thinking about was having a table out with, you know, the new, you know, some of the, you know, adult, teen and children's mm -hmm. materials and it's like whoa <laughs> anybody randomly coming by is going to be touching it and then retouching it and i mean so you can't do well, that yeah but they we they we can do curbside pickup because yes well, been you doing do that curbside really well. pickup it needs yeah. to be and limited gonna, because we right. need to limit that. contact too right that's the reason that dick is going to be meeting with her and i want to make sure that people understand the library is not opening right. any, in any way, shape, or form in any way close to what we would normally be because we physically can't do that and protect the public but we still, in the same way that we can't open town hall. Or the senior center. But we still want to give them exactly. that service. I know people have been talking about opening the senior center, but what's happening across the state is what's opening is outdoor Tai Chi exercise mm -hmm. where people are physically distanced as well as having a mask on and they're outside in full ventilation of the outside mm -hmm. and then they can get together. But they still can only have a limit, they're still limited to 10. So um, 10 people or less. So okay. in fact, senior centers are not opening and I, I just wanna make sure that that's clear. So I'll make a motion to designate the uh, Board of Health agent to approve um, the reopening plans. Right. Um, I'll second that. From the yeah, Health. with input from the Board of Health. Thank you. Any further discussion on that? Um, do you want to specify Dick? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, so Richard Richard agents. Richard Kalashevsky uh, would be the main one, right? I don't. I I, want I, I was else I was just going to say I don't. I'm not comfortable with anybody else. Right. Just, he's been at a, this point. on top of this right in the beginning. Yep. Board, board yes. So, yeah, so Richard. I would only feel comfortable yeah. with Dick. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Um, and then I'd like to just bring up one more thing um, mm -hmm. that was uh, under um, unanticipated 48 hours to the posting. It's the um, contact tracing test pass. We, as the Board of Health, um, have to adopt this as the, you know, the letter that we would give somebody if they were considered a close contact, and this would allow them 
to um, get testing, you know, or, or have the availability of testing if there's a test site available. And so what would happen is you, you have the state seal, but you also put the town seal on, and then it's sincerely the Deerfield Board of Health. Okay. And you would keep your community tracing collaborative and all this kind of stuff together. Because what it is, is is a team, you know, approach mm -hmm. that we've, we've been trying so hard to work, you know, a relationship with this um, community tracing collaborative. We now are on our third supervisor, but they're going to meet with us on the MAPCO level okay. for Franklin County. Um, and so, ho and we've now set our standards and they've agreed to them. Um, so I think it's going to work out. Okay. I think it's going to be okay. Um, and this is for, right now we're handling it ourselves, but if we open up and there's a second wave and we start getting inundated, this is, we're going to have to rely on them. So I think this is going to work out mm -hmm. fine, but we have to have this sorted out because we um, now want people to be tested if they're the close contact, right. even though they have no symptoms. Because up until now, once we adopt this, you can get testing whether you have symptoms or not. You don't have to wait till you actually have symptoms. Well, that would be great yeah. because then you're not passing so it around. I That's make a motion we um, uh, approve this test pass letter. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so. Trevor? Yes. Ka Casey, you just have to. Um, I don't think you finished the first vote. What's that? For Board of Health. I didn't hear everybody vote. On the, and you guys need to roll call. On the on which the uh, board of health agent designate to approve plans. I heard the motion, but I, and I heard yes. a second, but I didn't hear everybody oh. vote. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do it again. So, all those in favor of the motion um, seconded to approve the board of health, and that would be Richard Kalaszewski. As our um, to approve plans yeah, we for reopening. Right? Yeah. Okay. We'll do it again. So, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn. Yeah. Oh. Dave Wolfram, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. You got that? Thank you. Okay, thank no. you. Yeah, can you roll call the second one too for the contact tracing test pass? Yep. Yes. Go ahead. So, I, uh, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Dave Wolfram, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Okay, Casey, all you have to do is put the Deerfield seal on it and then it has to say the Deerfield Board of Health. Okay. With the three, the, and it has to list the three of us, okay? Can we authorize it to be used? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, so yeah, all yeah. three of you need to be listed. It can't just say the board of health. No, it has to. It has to have us as individually signed. And we authorize the stamp. Okay. Right. You yeah, we stamp. authorize the stamp. You you just have to have it out. You know, available to you know, li like Lisa White or whoever. Okay. Okay. So. In the so, can I ask a quick question just so I'm clear? We need. I need to address the formatting of it. Are you guys going to take a vote to use the stamp? I, I guess we have. Let's to. make a motion to use the stamp. I make a motion that we use the stamp on the test pass for, <laughs> you know, letter. Contact, <laughs> contact tracing. Contact tracing letter. And I'll prick my finger and blood on it. There we go. So we're good. Uh, second. second. Okay. All, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I think you're covered. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we should we should move before our meeting gets shut off. We should move to um, purchase the Prevere property closing. Well, just while we're nope. talking about COVID, nope. I promise nope. four sentences. One minute left. I we're doing stuff like this all the time. <laughs> it drives you crazy. But okay, go ahead. Everybody in the community has been really really good. It, everything is stable. All our additional cases have been healthcare workers. Um, so we're starting the reopening process. We're working very hard on our EDS planning. Um, we're making an, uh, a list of our supplies that we need. We're ordering, gonna order supplies. Um, anybody that's interested in volunteering, make sure um, you reach out to our Selectman's office or Mary Lipinski, which is um, Dave's wife, uh, to be able to um, volunteer, sign up. And really the most effective thing that you can do 
really honestly is wear a mask and try to social distance as much as possible. You can reemerge and do some of some things, but if you keep your mask on and you try to social distance and be outside, then you really are cutting your risk down tremendously so. And the risk to other people. And the risk to other people. Yep. Thank yep. you. Okay. Good. I'm, Ready? I, I won't, All right. I mean, I have pages, so, but that's okay. Sure. Not allowed. Right? I know. I won't, I won't go into it. Long, I won't so. go into it. <laughs> um, so we, we've really got to move to the Prevere property closing to uh, the approval yep. to purchase, authorize the chair to sign all transactions. Um, I don't know if that is in this gigantic book of papers. Um, what yes, you need it is. to do is take the vote. Okay. And so take a vote to, uh, to approve the purchase as it was approved by town meeting. Yep. I make a and motion. And in that, in that motion, authorize the chair to sign all the transaction documents as they come up. They're okay. not ready yet. All right. I make a motion to approve the purchasing of the property as approved by town meeting. And I authorize the chair, or the select board authorizes the chair to sign all documents related to the purchase. Of the Prevere property. Of the Prevere property. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have um, uh, the notification that um, Harry Ruddick um, would be retiring. So we got that. I'm very sad. Yeah. He is, well, he's luckily going to stay I've worked with Harry for years. Luckily, he is going to stay on for a bit as a part-time officer yes, for a while, is. right? So we won't lose him completely. I'm just trying to find that as well. Is that in here too? It's in your decision, oh, you have it. decision okay, items. Great. It should be yep. right past the Prevere memo that I gave you. Okay, let me just get to that. So he sent a letter June 1st. Do you want me to read it? Yes, please. Trevor? Yeah, until I can find it. Yep, I'm going through minutes. And... So, Sergeant Harry Ruddick III. Oh, there it is. Yep. June 1st. Dear Chief Pachurik, it is with both joy and sadness that after more than 32 years of service to the citizens of Deerfield, that I am requesting to retire from the Deerfield Police Department effective June 29th, 2020. It has been an honor to work for the Deerfield Police Department. I take great pride in wearing the uniform and seeing the department patch on my shoulder. I have witnessed this department grow into the professional and respected department that it is, and to be part of that brings me joy. I have lost count with the number of great officers that I have worked with here, as well as neighboring departments. All had an influence on my transition from a rookie cop to the seasoned sergeant that I am now, of which you have played a significant part. Through the years, at times, I have been challenged stressed, and frightened, but fortunately, those hard edges continue to be dulled with time. What is still sharp in my mind is the camaraderie, laughs, and shared feeling that we can endeavor to persevere together towards a successful conclusion. These times with my fellow officers, I will miss the most. Nonetheless, it's been an exciting ride and the ultimate in social work that I would not have traded. So let this letter serve as my official notice of my wish to retire from the full-time ranks. Please let me know if there are any other tasks or housekeeping issues that you would like me to complete prior to June 29th, 2020. Sincerely, Harry Ruddick III. Sorry, Sergeant Harry Ruddick III. Yes, thank you. Thank you very oh, much. I can't thank him enough for all he's Good done. Good luck to Harry. Yes. He's, he's just amazing. Yep. I remember when I was first an admin here, he was just so nice to me. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an excellent, excellent He's example one of, our of nice what officers. a police officer yes. should be, for I'll sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, when Harry first started on the police department, he was riding with me. Uh, one of our routines was checking out the high school. And I mean, he had only been, I mean, he had just started. We pulled into the high school, coming down by where the old building was now. And he said, there's somebody over there. So we stopped and started investigating and found a <coughs> young gentleman that was getting ready to fire on the high school. You're kidding. Really? Oh my gosh, I never heard that story. And, um, you know. Uh, Sharp eye. He picked up on that real quickly um, and come to find out the individual had a lot of stuff like the air fire bomb 
And then when we got the warrant to search his premises, he had more materials there. Wow. Oh my God, that was amazing. So he averted a huge uh, issue there. Wow. That's amazing. Yep. One of the many, many rides. Yes? Is our meeting over? No, no, no. What's that? I just wanted to suggest maybe we should send, if you get, if you, when you do take a, make a decision about accepting his resignation, I think we should send him a letter. Of course. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's and nice if, not, if nothing else, maybe we'll work with John. I'll see what John, if we yeah. could do a certification or something. Sure, sure. Absolutely. That would be nice, Casey. Thank yep. you. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. I, m I make a motion um, to accept his uh, regretfully. Re regretfully his retirement letter, but not really because he's coming back. I'm thankful. Thank you. He's coming back. Yes. Yeah. For as, as long a part as he time. can stand us. <laughs> yeah, for part time. So. With fewer headaches, let's hope. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. And he's yeah. a hell of an artist. Yes. Absolutely. Oh my goodness, he's amazing. Yep. Yes, he does beautiful watercolors. His father is too. His father's a watchmaker. So it was amazing. Um, I loved him. So do I hear a second? Dave Wolfram, seconded. All those in favor? Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Dave Wolfram, aye. Great. So we will we'll get back to that better and I'm sure recognize him in other ways yeah. too. Thank you. Um, so uh, next on the list is FY. 2021 appointment since we since we have um, a limited time um, can we just appoint the police and the EMS because that's that's uh, we always have to worry about that stuff and then um, can we can we look at the rest of the appointments for next week you know the 17th yeah because there's some vacancies and there's you know some people that we're not sure if they want to continue I mean we Right, you know, we do need to reach out. To we need everybody. to reach out and make sure people are truly interested in continuing. Um, okay. And so I and I don't and I are really you know we need to if anyone is interested in any um, town board or uh, committee, please let our selectman's office know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll just make a motion. I'm going to read the names off for the Deerfield Police Department crossing guards. Uh, for, these are all for FY21. This is uh, Diane Baronis and Henrietta Cocott. And then these are uh, police department full-time officers. I don't know if I have another slip here, but this is um, Marissa Smith and Timothy Boland. Uh, police department special officers, uh, uh, Deborah Austin. Uh, Robert Wagner is an officer. What's that? Worger. Bobby Worger. Oh, Worger. I, I can better get my glasses on here. Um, <laughs> Robert Worger, <laughs> Officer uh, Joseph, and you may have to help me with these names. Mishkowski, the yeah. third, Officer. Gary Sebelia, Officer. Uh, Jesse Rosnick, Officer. Chad Risley, Officer. Mark Wilkins, Officer. Nicholas Feld, Officer. Uh, Connor Parnell, Officer. Robert Thrasher, Officer. Mark Jocks, Officer. Um, Matthew Wozniak, Wozniak, officer, Nicholas Limoges, 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 yeah. thank you. Like Limoges um, dishes. Not, not Irish. Um, it's more of a French name, right? Yes. Um, uh, Nathaniel Walker, officer, uh, Brandon Bryant, officer, David R. Uh, Gendron, officer, and Raymond uh, Berniski is an auxiliary, auxiliary officer, um, Philip A. Snow, and Christopher N. Uh, Grimalo. And then Police Department Special Appointees is Kathleen Belanger as a matron. Um, Louise Kelly is a matron. Uh, Keith Wamet. Ken. Con Ken. Oh, Ken Wamet. Sorry. Ken Wamet, Conway Chief. Uh, James uh, Savine. Uh, Waitley Chief. And Donald Bates is the Waitley Sergeant. And I think that is there. And then. Um, so let's vote so that, let's vote and, that. Yep. and then we can do the EMS. So uh, do you have a second on that motion? I second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Wolf and I. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then uh, South County uh, EMTs. We've got uh, Timothy, Timothy Drumgool, uh, Teresa Emerson, April M. Fernandez, Aliyah M. Uh, Cosmo. Anthony Muzinski, um, Gary Ponce, Zachary Smith, 
Alicia uh, Toya, uh, David Zamoyski, James uh, Bardis, uh, Zach Bastoni, Sue Ellen Bellows, Samuel Broder, Abigail Candy, Leah Doolittle, Eric Drumgool, uh, Carly Eaton, Hannah Einstein, Eric Fitzgerald, Mason Jenkins, Louise Kelly, William Kimball, and Adam Martin, um, Lori McComb, Calvin McKemmy, um, Yvonne Marino, Nair uh, Ragoza, Philip Snow, Robert Swayze, Mark Tremblay, Jonathan Van, uh, Van Lan, and uh, Ahad Imri, uh, Amriel uh, uh, Amirin, oh, uh, Ahad Amirin Yildiz, uh, and I think that's all for the EMTs, yep. EMTs right, so far? Yep. I'll second that. Carolyn Ness. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, David Wolfram. Okay, those are done. And okay, so... Um, Did we have, I thought we had a letter from Chief on, yes, here, hang on a sec, let me look at this here. So I also, um, I also wanted to appoint, um, so this is a letter dated May 26th from the Chief. Um, so dear Honorable Board, the following is a list of recommended appointments with current pay rates effective July 1st. This is the list I was looking for. Um, I'm requesting part-time personnel be appointed from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Um, Full-time officers is John Paturic Jr. is the chief and definite uh, term um, at 4140, step 10. Adam Sokolowski, detective, sar uh, sergeant, uh, 2965, step two, indefinite. Brian Ravis, sergeant, 2965, step two, indefinite. Uh, Jennifer Bartek, sergeant, 2965, step two, indefinite. Um, Mark W. Uh, Pucholsky, officer, uh, 2703, step seven, indefinite. Uh, Marissa Smith, 2391, step two, indefinite. And Timothy Bolin, 2391, step two, term of 2021. And Matthew uh, Bader would be tw uh, 2329, step one, um, term of 2021. And then the special officers, I we already did all of those, right? In, in this, and the cross did we did, yeah. Uh, do we did that Mark Jackis? That might not be Let on. me just see this. Let me make sure. Well, I'm just going to read this anyways because I, I want to make sure that I haven't missed anybody for yeah, any no, reason. No, he was on there. Okay. He was? Go, yeah, but go ahead. Uh, so read, just read it again anyway. Deborah Austin, uh, matron, administrative assistant, 2777, step nine. For These are all for term of 2021. Harry, Harry Ruddick, uh, part-time sergeant, $28. Robert uh, uh, Warger, Officer 22, uh, Joseph um, Mikowski, Michkowski, <laughs> uh, the third Officer 2022, Gary Sibilia, Officer, uh, Court Officer 20, uh, $22, um, Jesse Rosnick, Officer $22, Mark Wilkins, Officer $21, um, Connor Parnell, Officer $20, Robert Thrasher, Officer $22, Mark Jacques, Officer $22, Matthew Wansick, officer, $18. Nathan Walker, officer, $18. Uh, Brandon Bryant, officer, $18. Christopher Gar Garmello, officer, $16.50. Ethan Kraus, officer, $18. Gregory Moretti, officer, $18. Um, and David Argendry is uh, auxiliary officer, and Ray Raymond Berniski is auxiliary officer, and the special appointees. Again, Kathy Belanger is a matron. Louise uh, Kelly Matron, Ken Wamet, uh, Conway Chief, James Savine, uh, Conway, uh, Waitley Chief, and Donald Bates is Waitley Sergeant. And again, the crossing guards are, are uh, Diane Baronis, $25, and Henrietta Cocott, $25. And I think that is everybody. Yep. And then, uh, do we have to appoint the per diems as well? Um, I, I think I think... read that list, so they're all on there. Yeah. So there's full time and part time. So I didn't read their amounts, but I think we're in good shape there. Yeah. So um, so that uh, that's my motion. Do I have a second on that? Uh, yes, I second that, Carolyn. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 
I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. Okay, that is done. Um, and then so next week we've got to get through all of these and then we should really just... We have the new liquor license uh, regulations we have to vote tonight too. We've got to do those tonight. So let's do those and then we can get back to that other thing. Um, that's done. Partial EMS police. So um, new le liquor license regulations. So this is coming up of a bit of a change. Casey, do you want to hit on this a little bit? Because this I know is yeah. something that we wanted to do uh, somewhat hastily because of the changes to COVID and all. We, yes, the changes to COVID have really affected how the governor sees doing business and the ABCC um, has made changes in support of what the governor's guidelines have been. I gave you town council's opinion. I also gave you a copy of the legislative changes, both on the governor's side and the ABCC regulations. What it all boils down to is, having been closed for so long, the intent is to assist businesses to get back to work safely, to get back to producing, in this case, it's restaurants, because it is limited to under certain conditions to restaurants that are serving food and currently have food service licenses. So one of the problems is every time you do an alteration of premises, and that's what this would be, if somebody were to try to do food service outside, they need to have certain things in place. They need to have detailed how they have their the plan, they're set up for the tables, how many people they expect to serve, um, what those distancing limitations are. It needs to be cordoned off. So there's this, this whole detailed list of what they need to do. And um, originally, when we reviewed it, we had to get confirmation that each alteration for each premises <coughs> needed to be on an agenda. So oh, I discussed this with um, particularly Dick and Bob our building commissioner, and then I contacted council because she had initially sent us the guidance document, and the suggestion that came back from council is something that you could consider, and that would be delegation for expedited approval for alteration of premises to allow these businesses to reopen and start employing their people and serving the public. We all want to be safe but we also want to make sure that these businesses can get back on their feet because so many people are going to not be able to do that if we don't facilitate the process. So this approach by delegating that um, through myself, the board of health agents, the police chief, and the building commissioner slash zoning art officer would allow us to do that more quickly. And the tools we have to do that are a new application, um, a license permit to actually use public space. That's a separate attachment. But there's a series of questions, and there's the ability to put conditions on these licenses that fit on a case-by-case -case basis the purpose of the, the businesses being able to produce and be open. So, um, so a couple of things. I'm in favor of, um, I'll just speak out loud so far. Um, so I'm in favor of empowering our town administrator, working with our health agent, building commissioner, zoning officer, and the chief of police to review these plans um, so that they're safe uh, for, for outdoor eating and, you know, and alcohol consumption. I assume these are, these are liquor licensed too, or is this different? This is just outdoor dining? But I assume this, this is just outdoor dining for liquor licenses that are section 12 that serve food. So um, now my question is, um, is that we, we would still collect a, uh, a fee for a liquor license every year, right? This isn't any different. Right. Do we do it in June? Different. Do we do it in June or do we normally do it in, in no. January, right? We wouldn't be we charged in November, actually. In November, okay. So yeah. this is not that. This is just allowing them no. to eat outside. And I wouldn't and I actually, would leave those fees. Oh, actually, I was just going to so say it's we're a temporary waiving. alteration of premises yeah. right. for the COVID outbreak itself. Right. And That's we fun. want it to extend 
to a period where they can operate regularly in, in this old normal that we know. Mm -hmm. But that yes. won't happen for several months. Right. So this would allow them to operate on a modified basis. Okay. So, um, so, so we're not collecting any fees. For just no. letting for, somebody do that, but normal, I mean, we want normal to encourage alcohol our, fees and normal restaurant right. fees you collect Yearly every year. Yearly normal right. stuff. You've but already just collected change them, is, actually. Right. Okay, you collected fine. them last November. Okay, good. So, so I'm fine with that. Then. Okay, so yeah. the modified premises description is really what it is. Okay. Okay, so this is Jen. Jen. Do you want to mention about the time frame? The time frame is very short. So we technically, the governor opened this on Tuesday, um, but we didn't even have this to go by until today, right. late in the afternoon. And that was after some pretty heavy discussion with the Board of Health agent and council. Yeah. Um, so one thing this would alleviate is the need to post every alteration of premises as a separate meeting. Right. It goes back to the earlier conversation where we're trying to expedite the business's ability to continue to operate, even in a subnormal atmosphere. Well, as long, I mean, I'm okay with this as long as, you know, again, the health agent, our town administrator, building commissioner, zoning right. officer, and chief of police look at these plans, make sure they are safe, and move forward with that. Uh, I think that makes in sense. In order for us to have the public feel safe, we have to make sure that we think it's safe. Right. And, then and the guidelines, some of the deep, we, the reason we thought the group of us would be a better choice mm -hmm. is that you've got more eyes on it. Yes, I agree with that. And and we can't come to every single, you know, we would just be holding up business forever trying to do every one right. of these things. So, I, I, and I, I mean, trust I'm, the expertise we have. In this case, have. I think it would be a very good gesture for the, yeah. for the town to consider making sure that these businesses can reopen expeditiously. Okay. And safely. And safely. Yep. And safely. Yep. So, okay. Um, I'll make the motion to move the, that the board adopt the policy and application entitled temporary extension of premises, uh, colon, outdoor um, dining area on private property slash parking lot as presented by the town administrator and further to delegate the processing and approval of said applications to the town administrator in consultation with the departments identified in this application. I, um, this is Carolyn. I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Mine. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. And then, um, so, and then so I- To the question of permit fees. So yep. this was, this was a secondary request that we discussed, that I discussed with council, as well as the yeah. two, I didn't discuss it with the chief, but I, I did talk to Dick I, and Bob. And one of the things that we think could be helpful for the businesses is to waive the application fees mm -hmm. for anything associated with temporary outdoor dining, because right. they're already going to be investing a lot of money in bringing their staff back, bringing yep. food in with with not as much confidence as they normally would that they, that they're they'll be able to make that money back. Right. No, I get it. Especially if it's just the temporary stuff. It's not the every year, every year kind of thing. So, um, right. I, I'll make that motion to I move that the application fees for uh, temporary outdoor dining, as well as attendant building permit fees for the erection of tents or coverings, be waived by the town for the duration of the executive order COVID nineteen number thirty five or November. First, 2020, whichever shall occur first. Uh, um, Any further Casey, discussion? Casey, do you want to change that date like we had discussed? Do, what what um, date what did you have in mind? I just know that other communities have made of the executive order. Yeah. But I don't know if we can go to December 31st. But it would be. We would have to do a renewal anyway. The weather. But would it just like if we did a six months like it's either or not because the thing is is if you if you set a timeline of november 1st and it goes beyond november 1st then we have to come back and and make this decision again i mean that's fine if we do that but right now i think we've got to see what happens i think that was the reason that kate asked me to put that particular language into a motion because okay. we don't know what's going to happen and we the ABCC and, and the governor may well have made adjustments to deal with that. Yeah. Okay. We can All come right, back if you. needed. Sorry. Sure. Thank you, though. That's okay. Um, 
So I've got a second from Dave. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carol. Oh. I, Carol and Ness. Okay, thank you for you know doing that so quickly and jumping on that for our businesses. And, um, and I just trust again that you guys will look at that carefully and make sure that everyone's following the rules and doing what they need to do and are you know, sanitizing and taking all steps to keep people safe. So thank you for that. Um, the next, next item is a USDA uh, ADA grievance policies. Um, so there's I'm two different policies. And yeah. I noticed I couldn't find a USDA policy. The, because we have a loan and a grant with them, they're going to require us to have certain documentation published, and this is one of those things. Yep. So before we even get further into what they're going to do in terms of reviewing our documentation, they will come back and audit us. Okay. I wanted you to approve this. This is the exact language they hand out to all the other towns. Yep. Um, and I went looking. I don't know if you heard me before the meeting started. I asked if Barbara had a copy of the ADA policy, the notice, as well as the grievance policy, because I can't yep. find it in the town hall. I know we did this. And we need to make sure it's posted in the town yep. hall in all of our other buildings and also online. I know, I know we did this. We did, recently, this. But we that, did I mean, this. We did it a couple of years back, but that's fine. It's okay to reaffirm this. That makes sense. I have no problems re-voting it, yeah. but so I do know the, that we did okay. vote it because it was required. Yeah, yeah, but it, we'll right. continue. We'll just, at least you'll have a fresh copy and it'll be, yeah. it'll be ready for you. <laughs> uh, so this is the Americans. Not with, that I want to be the ADA coordinator, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> Americans with Disabilities Act notification. So the town of Deerfield does not discriminate on the basis of disability in, in access to or operation of its program, services, activities, and hiring practices. Um, if you need auxiliary aids and services for effective communication, such as sign language interpreter and uh, assistive listening device or print material in digital format or a reasonable modification in program services or activities, contact the ADA coordinator as soon as possible, preferably 14 days before the activity or event. A grievance procedure is available to resolve complaints. Um, upon request, this notice is available in alternative formats such as large print or braille. Uh, questions or concerns, complaints, or requests for additional information regarding the ADA may be forwarded to the designated ADA coordinator. Name is Casey D. Warren, Town Administrator, 8 Conway Street, Deerfield, Mass, 01373. So, um, I make a second. All those in, any further discussion? All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. I just want to say that we did vote this we have been a strong ADA supporters mm -hmm. and we did vote this in and I a, know new, a, plan a new plan too. Yeah. not too long ago. Right, we're working on, I think well, that's in work. Well, we're working on a plan now. Right. Exactly, because we, we, yes, thank you. But so. we, I mean, no, we voted. Yeah, that's actually, we're trying to get an extension on our ADA grant. Yes. So um, that's why, I'm, I mean, totally I know we favorite. did it. Yep. So that's all right. So, and this other one is the Americans with Disabilities Act grievance procedure. So this is just adopting right. the steps uh, for the grievance. So I, I would make a motion to approve this. I will second that, Carolyn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yeah, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Um, Before we get to the um, mail, Aren't we supposed to vote these minutes? Yes, we, we do. We have a consent agenda. There was one item we wanted to just confirm. Casey had a question on, which was the minutes yes. of, um, I'll find it here. I would the say. The minutes of the 9th of October, 2019. I would yes. say it was David Wolfram. It was. It was, yeah. Yeah, we can yeah, okay. we confirm that. So with that change um, on page five of those notes, uh, of those minutes, um, I would make a motion to approve all four minutes as submitted and um, as amended for the uh, 9th of October. Uh, this is Carol, and I say yes. Uh, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dave Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Nice to see minutes again. It's a nice read. So we'll thank keep you working on them. Yes, I know it's a, it's tough. So I, I really appreciate your efforts on that front for sure. It's been a lot going on. I thank everybody that did them. Yes, Pat thank and, you, Pat. Uh, we got some help from Subaru Lot down the hall too. Yep, that's great. Thank you all. Um, do we have any other 
Um, oh, do we have any public comment before I just get to anything else? I just wanted to see if anybody's on the line and has a comment. I know we had comments earlier, but anybody else have anything they would like to talk about? Oh, wait a second. So you would uh, hit stars, not, uh, star six if you want to speak. We may have lost everybody. It's late. <laughs> um, so hearing none, you just feel free to speak up if I'm cutting you off, but hearing none, we'll just keep moving on. Um, Town Administrator's Report, do you have anything you want to hit on, Casey, other than um, everything else you've been doing? Except to, nothing except to say we're still working on the CARES Act. Yep. That grant, I'm hoping to have that done tomorrow. We okay. did get an extension until this Friday. Okay. Otherwise, it would have been done last Friday. Yep. Um, but we did some work on it. And I'm also working, there's other projects that I'm working on that are ongoing. Yep. Things that have cropped up after town meeting and other stuff that now is coming back up to the radar screen. Yeah. Plus, we'll be closing the year relatively quickly. Yeah. I just wanted to thank um, you and Jen. Um, particularly for all the work. I mean, Jen came in the week COVID hit and you've been here like a week yeah. before that. <laughs> I mean, it's been a few weeks before that, but you know what I'm saying. Um, you guys yeah. have been an amazing team and have worked so hard and, um, and just kind of took everything with stride and with a smile and um, a few I know you papers, were pulling but. your hair out, but honest <laughs> to God, thank you. Yeah, you're amazing. So amazing team. And we're so grateful to have you. The town is so grateful and lucky to have you guys working for us. And, um, and I'd like to extend that all the way out to all the staff here. Barb all and her the staff team and department heads oh are God, working department really heads. hard to keep providing. Brenda, every, I mean, Brenda has been oh, out no, crazy. Had a wonderful vacation to see her little grandbaby. So I know. Uh, very happy for her that she's out enjoying family right now, and um, and will quarantine when she gets back and working from the, <laughs> from her house. So yeah, she's set we, up to do we that. We have a plan for that. Yeah, we do have a plan for that. We're we're keeping everybody safe. But um, so I just I thank everybody for all their work. I mean, it's been hard and it's been a crazy time, but it's been so rewarding to work with you all uh, over the last year as chair. Um, even in the last couple months, but just it's all the town employees. I just love, you know, I, I was so thrilled to get elected again last um, Monday on Monday. And um, I'm just so excited to continue all the work we're doing and it's such a great team to work with. So, yay. yay. So thank you all very much. And you'll be chair before you know it. <laughs> snuck out one wait. extra meeting. You might not want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Oh man. <laughs> I'm getting too old to work 60, <laughs> 60 70 hours a week. Oh, That's my God. Man, That's so much. Nobody has any idea how much. I know. So are you is... going to hold on all the appointments that you didn't mention, including the DDIC appointments? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to. You know, we're meeting Friday, right? I mean, do we, uh, well, or it's not, is it on the agenda? We're, I know we had a specific thing. No, we Friday, have, right? we have, well, we have um, a meeting on the 17th, and we have a meeting on the 24th. We have a meeting yeah. on the 17th, yeah. yeah. The and we have a meeting you don't have to have since you approved the policy to delegate um, oh, approval okay. of the so license. Friday, so Friday's, Friday's, okay. Friday's meeting is canceled? Yes, it unless, can be canceled. Unless something else pops up. Uh oh. Now you're, uh -oh, now you're, now you're okay. <laughs> um, but so, but we have a meeting on the 17th, and we have the meeting on the 24th, and we so we have plenty of time to do the appointments because it, everything is not expiring till the 30th, and I so I would really like us to look at the appointment lists. We need to do reach out. We reach out to people that are up. And make sure they want to redo stuff. And, and we have had other people wanting to step up. Right, you and know, we have a few we letters. Have a tonight. We have a couple, couple yeah. of opportunities there, but we want to think about that hard, you know, hard. And, um, and, um, right. So, I mean, but so if people are interested, you know, please contact our Slugman's office or submit a letter of interest. It's been nice to see the public step up and want I, to I'm, I'm so excited there's ways. more you know more and more people are participating they're running for offices and they're stepping up to run on boards which yeah. is you know to sit on boards which right. is really nice which it, it is really nice um, it's good to see that energy so so we will promise uh, for sure Dedick and the rest um, a decision shortly on that and um, but within the next two meetings yeah I, 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 I actually if you don't mind let's could we do it to, on the 24th is that all right with you? I, I okay. Yeah. Only that will give people two, you know, two I weeks. Don't think that time sensitive, so. 
No, right. no, we did the two time sensitive ones. Yes. Um, I, I just, um, in case something happened, we couldn't, you know. Invest. Oh, yeah. No, you need to. So um, that way we have plenty of time, you know, to look at the lists and stuff. Because, I, I mean, I feel like it's important. And we should at least give the courtesy of asking people if they want to continue to serve. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. I, I mean, that's, that's important. Well, they can always send us information that they don't wish to serve. Right. Well... Um, I didn't think we had a meeting on the 24th. I thought we, we did. This meeting was unusual because we weren't sure we would be able to do a regular select board meeting on the 3rd because of town meeting. We mm -hmm. weren't sure we'd be able to do that. Right. So, oh, okay. um, well, then we had, in. generally it would have been the 3rd and the 17th. Right. And then July 1st would be your next meeting. Uh, yeah, the 24th, I can't. Well, it's the fire district meeting, and then I think I have a school committee meeting that Oh, night. okay. Then, yeah. we'll, then put it on the agenda so for the 17th. If, you're gonna, if, you're gonna, if you want another week to think about it, we just need to oh, commit to getting them done next week. All right, yeah, just put it on well, the agenda for the 17th. I don't know. Uh, the 17th is the okay. fire district meeting. i, I got to get that straight. Wait, which, which is, a, is the fire district meeting the 17th? I think the 17th, yeah. But that's at 7, so that's fine. We can eat, We can meet. I don't think we'll, well, we'll see what we have for work, but I'll figure it out. Do Anyways. you want, do you want us to meet? What's, why are we meeting on the 17th and then not the 24th? Because that was your regular day. The 17th was a regular select is that, board meeting. Oh, is that because you have the 17th off, Dave? Or do you have the 20th? Fine. Okay. So we'll speak, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll meet, we'll the, meet 17th. the 17th. Then put okay. it on the agenda for the 17th. Yep. Okay. We'll okay. People answers. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else anybody wants to discuss? I know we skipped over it quite a bit because we were worried about the time. Yeah, but um, I mean, there's the there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's a wicked lot going on. Yeah, and please again, uh, Saturday. I think we please, hit most of it. Oh, you know what? Saturday, please. Do we're gonna post mail. this. We're gonna yes, post mail. this on the website. Is the um, dragonflies? It's a wonderful f uh, flyer. Of why you should have oh. dragonflies in your yard sorry. to eat mosquitoes. I'm it's sorry. Okay. There, there's another thing. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off there. What I uh, meant to ask about, which is not on this um, agenda, but what is taking effect pretty soon, is the um, electricity aggregation. And um, we got to right. get that on the 17th, even though the 12th is when a lot of that information is coming out. I know that. Um, the energy committee is is standing by, ready to help any way they can um, get information out. I know they would like a meeting and would like to discuss that. I thought maybe they'd be on tonight, uh, but maybe they just didn't see it on the agenda. It was so full. I well, mean, the, the reason we took it off the agenda is the DPU letters aren't approved yet. I see. Okay. So just to recap, we do have a press release. Yes. That perhaps you could, because I Denise Allard sent the press release out and I forwarded it to you. Yes. Um, I've got I to think print that. You guys could it. vote to put the press release out when Denise it, along Denise's timeline. Yeah, so we'll wait on that a little bit. But I just, I just, I keep thinking that I want to talk about that. So okay, so that wasn't approved yet. All right. If so, you look through your email, she wanted some comments if you had any on some of the draft notification. Okay, I'll try to get back to that. And, and I think that. we need to have that done by Friday, if I remember correctly. I'll look in the email and if. You don't have it, yell at me and I'll send it to you. No, I think I've seen it. I do, because I started to look at it and then, you know. Casey is, uh, Casey, is the, um, the, this housing, um, is this housing meeting the one that was supposed to take, it's yeah. only an hour. Oh. It was supposed to take um, place of the one that was canceled in April. I think so, but I don't know if they, it, sometimes you have to limit your time on some of these meetings, depending on who's hosting them. It doesn't look like the one, is it? Uh, no, I don't know. I, I have a Department of Public Health call at, at that time. Um, it's, a, it's Tuesday, the 23rd. Yeah, it's so hard during the day for me. It's so um, busy at work. Could you just find out between now and next week? No big deal. Yep. But Trevor and I had met that lady. Uh, was it Ann Conley? Yes. And we, we still want to pursue some stuff with her, but, you know, from the MMA, 
we we were supposed to she had came out here to meet with remember that was your first day yeah that's right it was yeah your first day. And, that was my first day and yep. so we were supposed to have that big meeting in april and it was canceled because of covid so would you just we'll see if she's associated with this meeting because then i'll skip the dph call to do this okay but i don't want to skip the dph call if if this is just a i don't know what, whatever what else was in the mail there was there was um, uh, oh community. the letter that you wanted to send out to the nice young man at oh, Fairfield academy yes yes thank you yep that was um, um, and that was a lovely letter and then you. there's thank notification you. we did get our community compact and so i had signed that that grant document because it, they needed it right away and i yes. got an email this morning that they haven't received it so i'm going to send it out again tomorrow okay yep um, um yeah the letter to mr austin and then yes, contact tracing I think okay that was it. that's it yeah that's good okay that's it all right we'll entertain a motion to adjourn yes i i uh i'll second that carolyn any further discussion? All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer.